Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Naruto, The Six Eyes of the Uchiha Family. Chapter 1. Have you heard? That guy from Qingshui returned to the village with the he had with a foreign woman. Humph, you really soiled the Uchiha bloodline. It seems to be right in front. The two men were talking and looking ahead as they walked forward. In front, a black-haired man wearing civilian clothes limped into the Uchiha station. Next to him was a white-haired child. The two men, about 20 or 30 meters behind the older and younger people, muttered in a low voice, Humph, you little fools, they don't even inherit Uchiha's black hair. At this time, the white-haired child in front turned back silently. The two people behind him were shocked. This kid. So sharp. The white-haired child has eye-catching white hair and white eyelashes and eyebrows above his eyes. He also has a pair of bright blue eyes like stars. His handsome appearance makes it difficult to tell the difference between male and female. A pair of big eyes glanced at the two people, making them sit on pins and needles, as if they were being seen through. The child turned back and continued to support his father into the Uchiha clan's residence. HMPH. It's just a coincidence. That's how a kid could find us too. Feeling humiliated, the two people defended themselves and left angrily. What's wrong? Che. The sick Uchiha Shimizu lowered his head and saw his son's actions just now, and asked. The child named Che looked up, smiled and shook his head, it's nothing, father. Uchiha Shimizu nodded slightly, he knew that his son had been precocious since he was a child, so he didn't ask too many questions. The two people, one large and one small, arrived at the clan leader's mansion under the strange looks of many Uchiha clan members. After waiting at the door for a moment, the door opened and the two walked in and came to the interior of the mansion. Lord Patriarch, Uchiha Shimizu took Che and bowed respectfully at 90 degrees. The young man in front of him sighed and helped the two of them up. Just call me Fugaku, you were my senior after all. Uchiha Fugaku then took the two of them to sit down and asked, how have you been these past few years? Uchiha Shimizu coughed, and Che stood up and patted his father's back, trying to ease his pain. When I left Uchiha and Konoha, everyone was very unhappy. If my wife hadn't died of illness and I myself was on the verge of death, I wouldn't have come to beg you. Fugaku glanced at the little white-haired boy behind Qingshui and already had a guess in his mind. It's because of the children. Qingshui pulled Che to his side and said sincerely, When my family kicked me out of the house, I left Konoha in anger. It was because of my family that I was not classified as a traitor by the village, so I still feel sorry for my family. Be grateful. I don't expect my family to forgive me, I just want to accept this child. The child is innocent. Fugaku sighed. Oh, why bother? If you had followed the family's instructions to marry the clan elder's daughter, you wouldn't be in this situation now. Ching Shui remained silent. Fugaku had no choice but to compromise and spoke again. That's all, what's this child's name? Che. The white-haired boy answered, his eyes bright. Fugaku nodded. Uchiha Che, starting from today, you are a member of the Uchiha clan. How old? Five years old. Uchiha Che replied. Fugaku looked at Chingshui. I will let the child enter the ninja school, don't worry. Thank you, patriarch. Chingshui bowed in thanks. I still keep your house for you, but no one has cleaned it for a long time. Clan leader bids farewell. Ching Shui stood up with difficulty and left with the support of his son. Fugaku looked at the two people walking away with complicated eyes. Ching Shui and his son came to a rather secluded mansion. Although this place is remote, it occupies a large area. Apart from being a bit shabby, it is actually a good place to live. There is a gurgling stream next to it, and the cries of birds can be heard from time to time in the surrounding forest. Uchiha Che helped his father onto the bed and let him lean on him for a while while he began to clean the house alone. At this moment, Ching Shui suddenly began to cough violently, and then spit out a large mouthful of blood. Uchiha Che immediately put down the broom in his hand, stepped forward and took out a handkerchief to wipe the corners of Ching Shui's mouth. After a while, Ching Shui spoke weakly, with a faint smell of blood. Che, you have to become stronger. Only by becoming stronger can you take the initiative in your life in this world. The room on the left is my study. The cabinet on the lower left of the desk contains the gifts I left for you, which can help you become stronger. 
I am a withdrawn person and not good at dealing with others. There are only two people in the village who I can call friends. One is Uchiha Fugaku, and the other is Yuhi Mahong. If you encounter trouble, go to them. For my sake, they will help you. Ching Shui said this for a long time, his tone getting weaker and weaker, until his breathing gradually became weaker. That night, Uchiha Shimizu died at home at the age of 25. The funeral was organized by Uchiha Fugaku, but there were only a few guests. Apart from Fugaku's wife Uchiha Makoto, there was only one other man. Konoha Junin Yuhi Mahong. He was wearing the green vest of Konoha Junin. He looked dusty and looked like he had just arrived from a mission. After a few words of conversation with Fugaku and his wife, Yuhihi Mahong came to Uchiha Shimizu's tombstone. Uchiha Che knelt in front of the tombstone in silence, but did not cry or make trouble, which made people feel so mature and heartbreaking. Child, Yuhi Mahong patted Uchiha Che's shoulder. Uchiha Che turned around and saluted, Hello, Uncle Junhong. Yuhi Junhong was a little surprised. How do you know I am Yuhi Mahong? Uchiha Che explained, Father said that he only has two friends in Konoha, Uncle Fugaku and Uncle Junhong. Yuhi Mahong looked at Uchiha Che's blue eyes and said, Don't worry, my child, I will treat you as my own. Uchiha Che bowed again. After the funeral, Uchiha Che returned home. The house had been cleaned inside and out, and the huge mansion looked very empty with only him living there. The bloody smell in the master bedroom has been washed away by water, and the last trace of his father's existence is gone. Uchiha Che only felt lonely as never before. He knew that he was not from this world. After a while, Uchiha Che came to his father's study. The bookshelf was filled with all kinds of books. Uchiha Che went directly to the desk his father mentioned, opened the cabinet, and took out a wooden box. Opening the wooden box, there were several books and a seemingly ordinary piece of paper inside. Chakra Extraction Method, Fire Ninjutsu Collection, Water Ninjutsu Collection, Illusion Jutsu Collection and Experience, Uchiha Ninja Tool Control Technique, and the Chakra Test Paper, this it was the gift Uchiha Shimizu left to his son. Have you heard? There is a transfer student coming to our class. In a classroom at Konoha Ninja School, several well-informed children were discussing loudly. In fact, the so-called well-informed is just something I heard by chance when passing by the teacher's office. Obito, there is a transfer student. What kind of person is he? An innocent and cute girl with short brown hair put on an expectant posture. There were two streaks of paint on the girl's face, which made her very beautiful. In fact, girls are simply curious about strange people or things, but young boys with a budding heart often find rivals for themselves in some inexplicable places. HMPH, you can't compare to my genius Obito. Lin, just wait until I become Hokage. The girl named Lin was stunned for a moment, then smiled brightly. Okay, I'll wait. The girl will always take the boy's surprisingly childish words seriously. Perhaps this is one of the reasons why she occupies such an important position in the boy's heart. Not far away, a masked boy with dead fish eyes and white hair, Kakashi, crossed his arms on his chest. He looked towards the door and was keenly aware of the movement. I heard your noise downstairs, how unbecoming it is. Hiroshi Yamashita, the teacher who was always known for his strictness, shouted loudly. The whole place was quiet now, but there was still a young man chatting quietly with the girl next to him. The boy was wearing a net and a sleeveless jacket. His skin color was a bit browner than that of his peers. He was talking to the girl next to him. But the girl's mind had already flown away. He must be the transfer student that my father told me to take. The girl has slightly curly black hair big eyes, red pupils as dazzling as rubies, and a face that is slightly baby fat, delicate yet cute. These two young girls are Asuma Serutobi and Kurenai Yuhi. Calm down, Yamashita Hiroshi reminded him again, and Asuma calmed down. Yamashita Hiroshi looked at Asuma and said helplessly, after all, he is Hokage-sama's son, so let's give him some face. Asma's academic performance is considered top-notch in the class, but her temperament is a little immature, or a little rebellious, and she is a thorn in the class. If this does not change in the future, his achievements will be limited. This is an inference drawn by Hiroshi Yamashita based on his teaching career of more than 20 years. Yamashita Hiroshi looked around. 
No one dared to say anything wherever he looked, so he nodded with satisfaction. After all, he is in the top class, and he still has potential. If nothing happens, he will be the pillar of Konoha in the future. Yamashita Hiroshi is full of expectations for this class. Our class has welcomed a new classmate, now let the new classmate introduce himself. After Yamashita Hiroshi finished speaking, he motioned for Uchiha Che to step onto the podium, while he stepped aside. As Uchiha Che walked onto the podium, the students in the audience started talking to each other again, especially the girls. Che's outstanding appearance is very lethal to girls. Uchiha Che glanced at the audience, and his eyes were as bright as the stars, causing several girls to scream, which was comparable to some groupies on earth. My name is Che, Uchiha Che. Uchiha Che said calmly. Uchiha, Obito, aren't Uchiha all black-haired? Compared to Uchiha, I think he looks more like Kakashi. Nohara Rin patted Obito and asked softly. Obito blushed slowly at first, then reacted and replied. Oh. I heard, it's that fool. Anyway, he is not a pure blood Uchiha. Obito looked at the white-haired boy on the stage again, and couldn't help but curled his lips and said, Huh, another white-haired guy. Kakashi, who was attacked, glanced at Obito rather unhappily, and then turned his attention to Uchiha Che. Uchiha. Kakashi felt a desire to win silently in his heart, and he felt the threat to his genius status from Che. It's just Che, Yuhiko confirmed. The boy in front of her was Che Uchiha, whom her father had told her to treat as a relative. He's quite handsome. Next to him, Serutobi Asuma leaned back rather unhappily. What Uchiha, the Serutobi clan is the strongest in Konoha. Asma's voice was neither soft nor loud, but it fell into Che's ears. Che glanced in Asma's direction, his eyes still calm. Asuma was surprised by Che's keenness. After all, he didn't speak loudly, and the classroom couldn't be said to be quiet now. How could he be noticed? But at this time, Yamashita Hiroshi spoke up, breaking the awkward situation. In addition to your name, you also need to introduce your hobbies and dreams, so that your classmates can understand you better. Che then continued, I like. Che originally planned to deal with it, but at this moment, some memory fragments suddenly appeared in Che's mind. Che knows that he does not belong to this world, but he knows very little about his past life. It is not an exaggeration to call it amnesia. And now, because it touches on topics like personal preferences, some of Che's memories emerge. I like eating sugar and barbecue, fighting, hunting, listening to shamisen, and hate drinking. As soon as Che finished speaking, some boys in the audience burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha, such an old-fashioned hobby, even listening to shamisen, even my grandma doesn't listen. Ha 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 ha. The one who laughed the loudest was Obito. Hearing Che's old-fashioned hobbies, Obito couldn't hold back. Several boys also laughed. Serutobi Asuma laughed at Che for pretending to be mature. Ha ha, I still like fighting and hate drinking. I'm just a kid. Why are you pretending? Yuhi Hong heard the sarcastic remarks around her, but she didn't agree with them because she saw from Che's eyes that he didn't seem to be lying. But the preferences he mentioned were really not like what a child could say, which made Yuhi Hong feel very conflicted, which resulted in a strong curiosity. Asuma turned to Yuhi Kuranai and said, Kuran, look at him, he still hates drinking. The law of Konoha village stipulates that minors are prohibited from drinking. It's too much to pretend to be mature. Kurinai Yuhi nodded without knowing why, but in fact she didn't listen to what Asuma was saying at all. Her red eyes were staring at Uchiha Che on the stage. Asuma felt her cheeks and ears feel warm, probably flushed, and that embarrassing feeling made Asuma very unhappy. At this time, Che on the stage spoke again. Dreams. God not so much dreams as goals. My goal is to become stronger until I become strong enough to take the initiative in life. This mature statement caused some less calm girls to scream. This mature, aloof and handsome man has always been popular with the girls in the school. However, there are also people who are taking a closer look at Che's statement. Kakashi muttered the word initiative thoughtfully. And Kurinai Yuhi, who knew Uchiha Che's family background, was even more sympathetic. A young boy whose parents had died and lived alone in an Uchiha home was not a passive person. No wonder he was so obsessed with taking the initiative. 
Yamashita Hiroshi was also surprised by the surprising maturity of this transfer student, but he was well informed and had seen all students, so he walked up to the podium. You can take the empty seat. Yamashita Hiroshi pointed to an empty seat in the classroom. Uchiha Che had no objection and walked down. The classroom of the ninja school is equipped with three seat tables and chairs, and the so-called empty seat happens to be the innermost one next to Asuma and Yuhi Kuranai, located on the far right side of the second row by the window. Please give way. Asuma didn't reply, silently stood up and moved his position out of the way. Yuhi Kuranai smiled and said hello. Hello, I'm Yuhi Kuranai. Please take good care of me in the future. Uchiha Che showed a clear expression. After all, Yuhi Kuranai and Yuhi Mako were almost the same father and daughter. Thank you. Uchiha Che bowed slightly, actually expressing his gratitude to the father and daughter. However, Yuhi Hong blushed at this serious attitude, and waved her hands and said, No need to be so polite, my dad told me to take care of you. Uchiha Che nodded and walked in. When Asuma heard Yuhi Kuranai's words, she couldn't help but feel jealous. Hiroshi Yamashita brought the textbook to Che, then returned to the podium to start teaching. Today our history class talked about the first ninja war. War, is inevitable in every world. Che said with emotion, opened the book and read it carefully. Huh, what did you say? Shihi Hong asked curiously. Che shook his head and said, nothing. You turned to the wrong page. This is the history of the establishment of Konoha. Yuhi Hong looked at the textbook in front of Che and said. Che looked at the family crests of Senju and Uchiha in the textbook and was lost in thought for a moment. Hong reached out and helped Che open the correct page. Che said thank you and took the paper from the book and turned it over. This harmonious and friendly scene made Asma's fist on the side harden. He touched his head and felt uncomfortable on his head, as if he was wearing something. The class passed quickly, and Che listened very carefully. After all, this was the first time he had received knowledge education in such a systematic way in this world, so that he was still flipping through the books after class. Blue Eyes quickly scanned the book. History, code texts, chakra extraction, ninjutsu theoretical knowledge, these things were all sucked into Che's brain like water being sucked into a sponge. With Che's intelligence, it was easy to understand these brand new things. He had already finished reading more than half of the class, and he naturally did not intend to miss it after class. The classroom was very noisy after class time, and almost everyone gathered together in twos and threes to chat and play. After all, they are the first year of ninja school. These boys and girls are half-grown children. No matter how precocious they are, they can be extremely precocious. Kurinai left her seat to chat with her little sister Midarashi Anko. The purple-haired girl, Midarashi Anko, poked Kurinai with her elbow. Hee hee, your new deskmate is very handsome. He is much more handsome than Asuma, and he is a better match for you, hee hee. Midarashi Anko said this with a smile that all best friends would understand, and raised her eyebrows, making Kurinai instantly understand what she meant. What are you talking about? Kurinai patted Anko on the shoulder shyly, but Anko continued to gossip. Asuma looked at Uchiha Che who was sitting obediently at the table and laughed at, nerd. The novelty of being a transfer student was not worth the indulgence after class, so no one bothered Che. Che just read quietly for several minutes. The students in the classroom left one after another. The next class was a battle drill, so naturally it had to be taken outdoors. Che then put down his textbook, left his seat and followed the crowd to the practice venue. Hiroshi Yamashita is still the teacher of this class and is already waiting on the field. It's already time for class. I'm still walking slowly. Hurry up. Yamashita Hiroshi was still so strict that the students were frightened and hurriedly gathered. When everyone arrived, Yamashita Hiroshi took out the list and announced, Today's battle practice continues. Today starts with Moonlight Hayate. You choose your opponent. The winner can continue to choose his opponent. According to the setting, Moonlight Hayate and Midarashi Anko are currently only two years old, but in the original memories, they are the same age as Kakashi, so I ignore the age setting bug here. I choose Che Uchiha. Moonlight Hayate, a sickly looking boy with dark circles under his eyes, stepped out and announced his chosen opponent. The atmosphere on the court instantly became lively. Hey, I don't think that transfer student knows how to fight. 
Although Moonlight Hayate is always coughing, he is still very strong. That's right, the transfer student is probably in danger. Che's ears twitched slightly, gathering information about his opponent. It sounds like the opponent is considered a strong player in the class. Yuhi Hong couldn't help but worry about Che. The eyebrows on her face were already wrinkled, and her eyes were staring at Che's back as he walked onto the stage. Enko next to her looked like she had been knocked down, while Asuma looked like he had eaten up his answer. Che and Moonlight Hayate stood in the middle of the open space in front of everyone. The open space was about 20 meters long and wide, which was more than enough for children to fight. Che clenched his fists, thinking about how to defeat the young man in front of him. You haven't refined chakra yet, have you? To be fair, I won't use chakra. Moonlight Hayate, a kid who was very martial-minded, took the initiative to limit himself. Che refused. It's unfair to you that you don't use chakra. Che's words are understood by Moonlight Hayate as, I don't need chakra to defeat you. So Moonlight Hayate didn't hesitate anymore and directly planned to use his true skills to deal with the transfer student in front of him. Although in every aspect, he should be stronger than the boy in front of him who didn't even have chakra, Moonlight Hayate felt like he was facing a formidable enemy. The boy with white hair and blue eyes in front of him always felt an inexplicable sense of oppression. Being able to use chakra actually made Moonlight Hayate feel relieved. Che touched the area around his eyes, and those blue eyes were still clear. All kinds of details from all directions fell into Che's eyes. Six eyes. Che remembered that his eyes were called six eyes. It seems that these eyes can give him strong insight. These eyes, coupled with the remaining combat experience in his subconscious and the fighting consciousness in his bones, are the confidence that Che, as a freshman who has only been exposed to chakra for less than two days, dares to fight against the strong men in the class. Che raised his fists one after another and placed them in front of his forehead and chest. He spread his legs and took a horse stance, staying the same to cope with all changes. However, Yamashita Hiroshi interrupted Uchiha Che who was already ready to fight. Uchiha Che, you must form the seal of opposition first. Moonlight Gale raised his right hand, extended his index finger and middle finger together, and put the other fingers together. This is the seal of opposition. Che followed suit and put down his hand to form a seal of opposition. Yamashita Hiroshi walked between the two, raised his hand above his head and then waved it down. The battle begins. Hiroshi Yamashita then exited the field backwards. Moonlight Hayate did not act rashly, he was waiting for Uchiha Che to take action. However, Uchiha Che seemed to be very calm and kept his original posture motionless. So Yu Guangfeng chose to take action after waiting for a few seconds, spreading his legs and rushing towards Che. In Che's field of vision, every move of Moonlight Blast was clearly seen. Based on these details, Che instantly formed Moonlight Blast's attack root in his mind. Moonlight Gale rushed in front of Che and threw out a straight punch, but Che blocked it with one hand. As I expected, strength is not his strong suit. Che's eyes were still calm. He had already guessed from various signs that the power of Moonlight Gale was not strong. After all, he is still young and frail, so even if he uses a small amount of chakra, he can only reach the strength of an average adult. Although this power is greater than Che's current power, it is still within the range where skills can reverse the situation. This punch was deflected by Che with skill, and the fist in front of Moonlight Gale's eyes quickly enlarged. I saw Che punching out the fist placed on his chest in a flicking motion, just in time to seize the opportunity for the Moonlight Gale to attack. It was too late for Moonlight Gale to block now. Fortunately, he reacted quickly and leaned back immediately. Because the downward force was too fast, he had no choice but to stretch out his hands to support the ground, and turned over five times in a row, moving away from Che. Che sighed in his heart, this body is still too weak, it would be nice if there was magic power. At this time, Che recalled that his power in his previous life seemed to come from the energy generated from negative emotions. Negative emotion. Che recalled the sad feeling of being alone in the world when his father passed away a few days ago. Aha! Uh -huh. A faint blue energy covered Che's whole body. Is this the power of a curse? This sense of familiarity must be right. The six eyes are the eyes that can see the power of the spell in detail. 
In Che's site, the composition of this blue energy was clearly analyzed, and it was integrated naturally. The power of the spell strengthened his whole body, causing Che's aura to rise suddenly. Moonlight Hayate secretly knew something was wrong, and then used the strongest ninjutsu he had mastered, the clone jutsu. Although the clone technique is only one of the most basic three body techniques, it is already considered powerful for first-year ninja school students. The question for the ninja school graduation examination in the original work is also the three body technique. Huh, is this the clone technique? Che tried to use his six eyes to directly see through the clone technique, but after all, the product was not the right version and he could not directly see through the chakra. However, through the observation power of six eyes, Che was able to instantly distinguish the true form from some details. Moonlight Gale and the clone attacked together, but Che ignored the clone and attacked directly towards the main body. As one of the most basic ninjutsu, the clone technique is naturally recorded in ninjutsu theory textbooks. Therefore, Che clearly knew that the clone did not have the weakness of attack power. As for the more advanced physical clones, Che didn't think the child in front of him could use them. Bang! With a powerful and powerful leg sweep, Moonlight Gale was directly swept away by the huge force. Moonlight Swift Wind looked confused in the air. What's going on? His strength was obviously not as strong as mine just now. Moonlight Gale rolled on the ground several times, but before it could recover, Che had already rushed forward and struck with a palm. Moonlight Hayate was so frightened that he quickly closed his eyes, and a strong wind blew across his neck, but it was not the blow he imagined. Yu Guangfeng opened his eyes and saw Che stretching out his hand in front of him, so he took Che's hand and stood up. Thank you, thank you. Che just smiled slightly and nodded. Uchiha Che wins and seals the seal of reconciliation. Yamashita Hiroshi announced. Moonlight Blast took the initiative to extend his index and middle fingers. Che then roughly knew how to tie the seal of reconciliation, and he also stretched out two fingers to hook with Moonlight Blast. It seems that ninjas have a strong sense of ritual. Che said in his heart. After the end of the game, Moonlight Hayate looked back at Che from time to time, such a normal character, not like Uchiha. He made a fist with his right hand and put it on his lips and coughed softly twice, silently paying attention to Che's situation in the audience. Wow. The transfer student is so awesome. Che won, and the most excited person turned out to be Midarashi Anko. The person who yelled the second loudest was Obito, ha 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 ha. As expected of his Uchiha. The genius is second only to me. Hong's little mouth opened slightly, and she couldn't help covering her surprised expression with her hands. Hongdu joked again, your new deskmate is really awesome. No one will dare to bully you in the future. You also told me that you wanted to take care of him. Who will take care of whom now? Hong's face turned red when she heard this, and she pinched the soft flesh of Hong Do's arm, making her hold back her laughter and close her mouth. Asuma crossed his arms and said in a bad tone, I just defeated Moonlight Hayate. I can do it too. Enko held Red's arm and stuck her head out and laughed, Ha ha ha, I think you are just jealous. You. Asuma glared at Enko. Anko was so frightened that she hid behind Kurinai, and did not forget to leave a sentence, Luan Luan Luo, the son of the Hokage cannot be offended. Hong, dumbfounded, intervened, okay, okay, stop bickering. Kurinai looked at Asuma who was very angry and felt helpless in her heart. Asuma's character is indeed a bit too impetuous and rebellious. Originally, Hong didn't feel anything about it, after all, other students were similar. Even if he is a genius like Kakashi Hitaki, Kurinai feels that he has a childish and immature side just like other boys. But Che was different. Although he was a little younger than himself, he was extremely mature and didn't look like a child at all. With the comparison, Kurinai became more aware of Asuma's character flaws, and even felt a slight resentment. Now it's up to you to choose your opponent for the next battle. Yamashita Hiroshi said to Uchiha Che. Che looked around with his six eyes, and everyone he scanned felt an inexplicable sense of oppression. Che was observing the auras of everyone present and preparing to judge the strongest among the students present. As a transfer student, Che originally knew nothing about the situation in this class. However, after some observation, Che had a general understanding, at least at the level of strength. So Che stretched out his hand and pointed out his opponent. 
If you want to fight, fight the strongest. The strongest in this class is naturally Hitaki Kakashi. The son of Konoha White Fang, this title is not much worse than the son of Hokage. And Kakashi's reputation as a genius is much louder than Asuma's. However, Che did not judge by his name, but by observing his physical fitness and calm aura. Sure enough, he also wants to challenge Kakashi. It seems that I have another opponent. A boy with a big nose and thick eyebrows with a shiny watermelon head sighed secretly in his heart. Hey, Kakashi, you can't be defeated by that transfer student, even though he is also an Uchiha, it doesn't matter, because only I can defeat you. The boy named Uchiha Obito said carelessly. Nohara Lin encouraged, I believe Kakashi will win. When Obito heard Lin's words, he changed his attitude, huh, if you lose, you lose. It just makes you embarrassed in front of Lin. Oh, I won't lose. Kakashi said. Kakashi Hitaki's white hair moved with the breeze and he walked onto the court with his hands in his pockets. A group of little fans screamed in the audience. On the other side, Uchiha Che, who is also a handsome white-haired boy, brushed away the bangs that were blown in front of his eyes by the wind with his hands, revealing his beautiful blue eyes. It caused a group of little fans to scream again. When the first wave of little fans screamed, the one who showed the most displeasure was Obito. This kid couldn't bear to see Kakashi being in the limelight. During the second wave of screams, Asuma was the most unhappy. He felt uncomfortable seeing Che inexplicably. Perhaps the interaction between Che and Hong made him feel threatened. HMPH, since you are so popular with girls, then don't come to compete with me for popularity. Asuma felt a little comforted by thinking this way. It has to be said that children in this world are very precocious, and they have an ignorant yearning for an understanding of love between men and women very early. Attracted by the screams of those nymphomaniac girls in the audience, many students from other classes gathered around, making the game a lot more lively. And Kakashi's reputation as a genius gave this ordinary intra-class battle a somewhat legendary feel. The battle between Kakashi and Che is as exciting as Exum and Kueishui and Yi Guchung's decisive battle at the top of the Forbidden City. Both sides form a seal of opposition. This time, it was Che who made the first move. So fast, Kakashi was shocked. It seems that he didn't use all his strength in the battle with Hayate. Bang, bang, bang. Kakashi and Che who rushed forward exchanged punches and kicks. They fought several times at one time, but Kakashi was at a slight disadvantage. Strength, speed and even combat experience all outweigh me. Who is he? Kakashi was thinking a lot for a moment. Strength and speed are all, but combat experience is. My fighting skills were all personally taught by my father. Quote dot dot dot. I can't control that much now. I have to keep a distance and use ninjutsu to win. Kakashi's fighting mind has been sharp since he was a child. After his calm analysis, he found that Che didn't seem to be able to use any ninjutsu, not even the basic three-body jutsu. This was Kakashi's advantage. Naturally, fighting is about using strengths and avoiding weaknesses, so Kakashi found an opportunity to force Che back after a fight, and then decisively distanced himself. Seeing this, Che had already guessed Kakashi's purpose, but it was too late. Bang bang bang. Several clones appeared on the field at the same time, but Che had already distinguished the original one. However, Che realized something was wrong. Firstly, the seal formed was different from the clone technique. Secondly, the swarming movements of these clones were obviously not feints. One of the clones rushed forward and punched out, and the punching wind further confirmed Che's suspicion. This kind of clone has a physical body. Che ducked sideways, but those clones had already surrounded Che. As expected, he is the strongest. He is not at the same level as other people of the same age. Che put up a posture and waited patiently for the clones to attack. After all, if he took action rashly, he would easily fall into passivity. However, Kakashi was unexpectedly alert. He formed a seal with his hands, then knelt down on one knee and slapped the ground. Earth escaped Tubo. With Kakashi's path, the ground beneath his feet rippled like water in a lake. Affecting the opponent's balance by changing the shape of the ground beneath your feet. Ninjutsu is really interesting. Che laughed from the bottom of his heart. Kakashi finally let him find the joy of fighting. Kakashi and his clones used chakra to attach to the soles of their feet, 
successfully stabilized their bodies under the influence of Tanami, and swarmed up to attack Che. It's foolproof now. Although you are very strong, you can't block my attack while your body is unstable. Kakashi thought he had a chance to win. After all, Che in front of him was already affected by the shaking ground and could not stand still. However, when Kakashi and the clones all rushed in front of Che and prepared to give the decisive blow, Che suddenly stood up and used a sweeping kick to kill all the clones that didn't react, and even the main body was swept away. It's the same as using magic to deal with this kind of ninjutsu. It seems that this kind of physical clone will disappear after being hit. Che analyzed the information obtained from the previous battle in his mind, and at the same time pursued him, not giving Kakashi a chance to breathe. However, Kakashi does have a lot of combat experience, perhaps because he has practiced with his father since he was a child. He turned around in the air, completed the cushioning action and landed on the ground when Che rushed in front of him, flew up with his hands on the ground and kicked Che. However, Che reacted quickly, and his hands directly grasped Kakashi's ankles. Kakashi's dead fish eyes widened, and he screamed in horror that something was wrong. Che directly threw Kakashi out, and then fell heavily to the ground. Bang! Kakashi was beaten to pieces, and then he saw a hand resting on his neck. I lost! I lost! Kakashi lay on the ground in a big posture, unable to accept this reality for a long time, and kept muttering these three words. Che saw Kakashi lying on the ground in a daze, so he retracted his hand and stood up. Failure is sometimes not necessarily a bad thing. Admitting failure can make people grow. Che Yuyu spoke with a meaningful tone, like an old teacher. Kakashi turned his head slightly and looked at Che, why are you, so strong? Che squatted down and looked at Kakashi with his blue eyes, because I have experienced a lot. Then he helped Kakashi up. Kakashi sighed deeply and formed the seal of reconciliation with Che. In Kakashi's view, the so-called, experienced a lot, should be just a way to comfort himself. How much can a child of his own age experience? If you lose, you lose. From now on, you will work harder to practice and strive to surpass him. Kakashi's mentality is not that bad. Although he is a little uncomfortable when he was so praised and suddenly fell down, he will not be decadent and give up on himself. At this time, after a long silence, the audience burst into screams and cheers that could bring down the entire ninja school. Everyone changed from disbelief to surprise at seeing great joy. The son of Konoha White Fang, Hitaki Kakashi, the most dazzling genius in the village in recent years, was unexpectedly defeated, and he was defeated by an unknown transfer student. This fun was a bit too much, and soon spread throughout the entire ninja school and even Konoha. Is this a battle between geniuses? Sure enough, I'm still too weak, Kai. I'm going to work harder. After school today, I'll run 500 laps around the playground. If I can't do that, I'll do 5,000 push-ups. Watermelon Head the young man swore secretly. Obito, who was still expecting Kakashi to make a fool of himself in front of Lin before the battle, changed his attitude again. Even Kakashi can defeat him, then my ranking in the class will be lowered again. Kai and Obito, as the best tailgaters in the class, reacted greatly to this battle of geniuses. Even the result of this battle reached the ears of the third Hokage. He defeated Kakashi. His name is Che Uchiha. He is indeed a genius. Unfortunately, he is an Uchiha. The third Hokage, Serutobi Hiruzen, sat in the Hokage's office with a pipe in his mouth, shook his head, blew out a smoke ring, and continued to review documents. After school time, Che packed up his things and prepared to go home. At this time, Hong next to her noticed Che's movements and reached out to say goodbye to Che. See you tomorrow, classmate Che. Well, see you tomorrow, Hong. Kurinai Yuhi called Che by his first name instead of his last name mainly because there was already another Uchiha in the class. In order to avoid the title being too intimate, I also added a classmate as a suffix. Unexpectedly, Che actually called Yuhi Hong by her first name, which was considered to be a bit offensive in the culture of the Fire Nation. After all, the two just met. Generally, only students who are very familiar with the class don't care about these rules. So Hong blushed at the name, and Che ran away after flirting, and was already far away. In fact, this is not Che's deliberate flirting with girls. 
There are two reasons why Che calls people by their first names. First, he didn't like these rules in his previous life and always called people by their first names. But in his heart, he treats Yuri Hong as a child, so he doesn't care about intimacy or not. On the other side, Asuma's face turned green with anger. We had only known each other for a day and we were already on a first name basis. After a few days, we wouldn't even dare to think about it. After suppressing the jealousy and anger in his heart, Asuma said to Hong, Red, let me take you home. It's getting late. Asuma seemed intent on comparison and called Kurinai's name. Only then did Hong recover from the name he just called. Seeing Asuma's eager eyes, she refused, No, I'll go back with Anko. After saying that, Hong opened her calves and found Anko and went home together. Your new deskmate is too awesome, Hong. If you don't like it, why don't you give it to me? What are you talking about? That's what you like, hee <laughs> hee. Asuma looked at the figures of Kurinai and Anko laughing and playing, and punched the table. As a result, his hand hurt and he gritted his teeth. Uchiha Station is a place that can be called a village within a village. It even has its own walls and gates, and its own commercial street. Che walked among them, and with the sharp mind brought by his previous life, he felt that the Uchiha clan was a bit too big for Konoha. In the textbook, Che learned about the history of the village and knew that the Uchiha were a powerful clan that had existed since the beginning of the village. And after the decline of the Senju clan, it has been the largest clan in Konoha. However, such a large family has not produced any Hokage, and Uchiha Madara, who led Uchiha and Senju to cooperate in building the village, defected. All this is enough to prove that the top management of Konoha does not trust Uchiha. Che turned into an alley, still thinking about this in his mind. After all, he is already a member of the Uchiha, and there are still intact eggs under the nest. If the Uchiha declines, he will not benefit. At this time, Che noticed something strange, so he raised his head and saw that he was blocked by several children in front and behind him. Are you that fool? You do have white hair. HMPH. Che laughed at himself, I was so lost in thought that I was surrounded by children. Sure enough, after becoming a child, I will inevitably be affected, and my perception will become dull. These children all look to be the same age as me probably five or six year old ninja school students. Who are you? What are you doing here? Che was not annoyed by the other party's insults. After all, no adult would get angry with a child. You don't even recognize me. I'm Uchiha Bronze Fire. The leading child announced his name. Another child who was somewhat silent then reported his name, Uchiha Iron Fire, the younger brother of Copper Fire. The remaining children also reported their names. So what are you here for? Che continued to ask. The leader, Tong Huo, gave a reason why Ling Che was speechless, I heard that you defeated Kakashi Hitaki. Huh, I'm not happy to see you in the limelight. We must teach you a lesson. So are you here to fight? Che said with a smile. Tong Huo said, yes, we are here to beat you. That'll be easy. Che's smile grew brighter. Tong Huo felt her anus tighten. Bang 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 bang. After more than 10 seconds, Tongwo and his party were beaten to the ground, unable to even resist. Che stacked a few people on top of each other, and then sat down on the top. You are so weak, why do you have the guts to come to me and fight? I don't understand. Che cast his gaze outside the alley and saw a few seconds later, a member of the Konoha guard passed by the alley and noticed something strange in the alley. After taking a closer look, he discovered that Che was sitting on top of other children with bruises and swollen faces, so he rushed in immediately. I am Konoha guards Uchiha Yoshimi. What are you doing? Release them quickly. The children under Che were so moved that they burst into tears when they saw helpers. Che then got up obediently. Uchiha Yaoi hurriedly helped the children up and asked, What's wrong? Why are so many of you beaten like this? The Uchiha copper fire trembled and pointed at Che with his finger. Che had no intention of hiding it and directly admitted the fact. They were going to beat me up, so I beat them all before they did it. Only then did Uchiha Yaoan recognize it, so you were Uchiha Che. Come with me, this matter must be reported to the clan leader. After a while, in the clan leader's residence, Fugaku quietly listened to Uchiha's report on the smell of medicine, ignored Uchiha Copperfire who had been crying, and came to Che. 
You can't be blamed for this matter. It's Uchiha's problem. Don't worry, I will let Uchiha admit you. Fugaku turned to Yahweh and ordered, gather all the ninjas of the Uchiha clan and gather at Nanga Shrine before sunset. Yes, Yahweh seemed to be Fugaku's loyal subordinate and was very obedient to Fugaku's instructions. Uchiha Shrine, also known as Nanga Shrine, is located on the edge of the village. Although it is a shrine, it actually enshrines the ancestors of Uchiha. Che followed Fugaku, stepped over the steps, and passed through the red Torii gate that symbolized the shrine. At this time, the sun was setting, and the dim light enveloped the entire shrine, adding a bit of divinity to the already ancient shrine. When we arrived at the shrine, we saw a statue enshrined in the center of the shrine. The statue was wearing a Magatama robe, with two small braids hanging down on both sides of its cheeks. Its appearance was no longer clearly visible, but the three Magatama in its eyes could still be seen clearly. That is our Uchiha ancestor. No one knows his name, but we still inherit his bloodline, and so do you. Fugaku saw Che looking up at the statue, so he said from the side. Che raised his head and asked, is the three Magatama the highest state of the Sharingan? Che remembered that his father also had a pair of three Magatama Sharingan eyes. Fugaku originally thought that Che was paying respect to his ancestors, but he didn't expect that his focus was on the Sharingan, but he also reacted and replied, On top of the three Magatama, it is called Mangekyo, but it is not something you can touch now. Che nodded and said no more. The two of them waited in silence as the Uchiha clan members arrived one after another. Yao Wei came to report, Clan leader, all of them have been notified except those who are performing tasks outside. After Fugaku gave a few more instructions, the smell of medicine left again, and when he came back he brought a black coat. At this time, everyone had arrived. There were more than 200 ninjas from the Uchiha clan, and most of them gathered in this shrine. Che observed the whole place with his six eyes. Basically, they were not weak in strength. At this time, Che also discovered that the bottom of the shrine was empty, and there should be a dark room. Fugaku spoke loudly. The reason why I called you here today is because of him, Che Uchiha. I want you to admit that Uchiha Che is a member of the Uchiha. There was an uproar in the audience, and several tribesmen stood up and pointed at Uchiha Che and shouted, How can he, a fool, be recognized by us? Sit down. Fugaku, who had always been good-tempered, rarely got angry. Fugaku is only in his twenties now, but he is very powerful and has the appearance of aging given by his pair of tear troughs, so he is still very intimidating. The tribesmen shut their mouths and sat down. Fugaku continued, I don't want to hear the word again. Can you guarantee that there is no foreign blood in your ancestors? Che's father was indeed removed from the Uchiha family, but Che was not, so he is still a member of the Uchiha clan. Indeed, Che's appearance is very special, with white hair and blue eyes, but Uchiha's bloodline does not lie in these. Yashura, your hair is not black, but brown. Are you not from our Uchiha? A brown-haired Uchiha ninja below replied, the patriarch is right. Seeing this, Fugaku continued, besides, Che is a rare genius among us Uchiha. Today he defeated Konoha White Fang Hitaki Sakumo's son and brought glory to us Uchiha. Are you going to force this genius away? Fugaku's argument and final rhetorical question silenced the Uchiha clan members. Fugaku's tone then changed, okay, this matter is over. I represent Uchiha in front of Uchiha's ancestors and formally accept Uchiha Che as a member of the Uchiha clan. Fugaku said, showing off the coat in his hand. The back of the coat happened to have the Uchiha family crest, the flame fan. Then Fugaku put his coat on Che. And Che was extremely calm from beginning to end. Fugaku's move to recognize relatives at the shrine was really wonderful. On the one hand, Che, a genius, was officially included in the Uchiha in front of the clan, establishing the majesty of his own clan leader, and at the same time attracting a future strong man to the Uchiha. The second one creates the feeling that Fugaku has pulled Che into the Uchiha through his own efforts, and now Fugaku has become Che's benefactor. If Che were an ordinary child, no matter how talented he was, he would be won over by Fugaku because of this. Unfortunately, Che is not an ordinary child. Although the memory of his past life has not been restored, the thinking of an adult is still retained. 
Che will be grateful to Fugaku, but he will not have any unnecessary feelings for Fugaku. This is just mutual benefit. Che put on his coat, the size was just right. Thank you, chief. Fugaku smiled and patted Che on the shoulder, from now on, you must serve as a member of Uchiha and restore the glory of Uchiha. Che pretended to be excited and replied, yes. Fugaku raised his head with satisfaction and looked at the people in front of him, and said, does anyone have any opinions now? No comment. No. Very good, Tongwo, you bring your companions up here to apologize to Che. Fug raised his hand and asked Tongwo and Tiehuo to come up. Tongwo, who had a bruised nose and face, stared at Che unwillingly, then silently withdrew his eyes under Fugaku's majestic gaze, lowered his head, bowed and apologized, I'm sorry, it's our fault. Che walked up and helped a few people up, and said sincerely, it doesn't matter, I have forgiven you. Besides, I have a problem with beating you. Let's just laugh it off and let go of our grudges. We will all be a family from now on. This generous and decent attitude has been recognized by most of the tribe. This kid is pretty good. Yes, defeating White Fang's son shows that he is very talented and also so humble and sensible. In the past, our attitude was too harsh. Even those naughty kids have changed their attitude towards Che. This guy saved us some face, so it's not so bad. Tong Huo sighed in his heart. Tie Huo himself was dragged here by his brother. Now that he was forgiven, he breathed a sigh of relief, and his attitude toward Che changed a lot. The attitudes of the other children were also very similar, and they were basically impressed by Che's behavior. Fugaku was satisfied when he saw such a brotherly and respectful scene, very good, this is our Uchiha's future. From now on, you should live in peace and stop fighting. Che, Tonghuo and others bowed their heads obediently to show their obedience. Fugaku then motioned for a few people to leave, and then faced all the clan members and said, I hope that the Uchiha clan can live in harmony. Only in this way can Uchiha be great again. Uchiha. Long live Uchiha. Long live Uchiha. A few enthusiastic young people below raised their heads, and then a group of people echoed, and finally everyone shouted Uchiha's name. This scene was like some kind of cult scene, and the fanatical atmosphere made Che have to pretend to follow the crowd and shout, Long live Uchiha. Fugaku finally calmed down everyone's emotions and announced the disbandment, specially keeping Che here. It was my problem before. I didn't notice that you were ostracized by those tribesmen, but don't worry, this kind of thing won't happen in the future. Fugaku's tone was calm, like a class teacher who taught patiently. Che made an extremely touched expression and choked with sobs as he said, Thank you, Patriarch, for your help. Seeing this, Fugaku added, if you need anything in the future, just tell me and I will satisfy you if I can. Che then spoke with some hesitation. When I was fighting Kakashi, I felt that I didn't know any ninjutsu. Want ninjutsu? No problem. But don't worry, wait until you refine the chakra and test the chakra properties first. Then I will give you ninjutsu with several properties. Fugaku shot he promised while holding his chest. So Che returned home satisfied, and immediately took out the book on chakra extraction methods to continue practicing. Che has been exposed to chakra for two days, and today is the third day. Che hopes that he can successfully extract it today. Compared with the energy generated by pure negative emotions such as mantra, chakra, a combination of physical energy and spiritual energy, is obviously more difficult to refine. Of course, this is for Che. After all, not everyone has the qualifications to awaken the curse. Che closed his eyes, completely silenced his mind, and concentrated on feeling the combination of physical energy and spiritual energy in his body. After a while, Che opened his eyes. Successful. Che felt the energy in his body that was completely different from the power of the curse. Chakra and mana are easy to distinguish. Chakra is pure neutral energy, while mantra is indeed the curse energy extracted from negative emotions. Che took out the chakra test paper and injected a ray of chakra from his body into it, and saw that the test paper quickly changed. The test paper is divided into five areas, one is on fire, one is split, one becomes wrinkled, one becomes wet, and one is crushed. These five areas mark the five chakra attributes. Che was a little surprised. After all, he was no longer ignorant of ninja knowledge. 
The more chakra attributes a ninja has, the more ninjutsu he can use. He knew this. So Che went to find Fugaku early the next morning and informed him of his five attribute physique. Fugaku was very surprised. At first, he even thought that Che had made a mistake. He only accepted the fact after letting Che test it again. Back then, your father was considered a genius if he was born with the two attributes of fire and water. I didn't expect that you would be better than the old. Don't worry, I will give you the ninjutsu of these five attributes. After receiving Fugaku's answer, Che left the Uchiha station with satisfaction and went to ninja school. Fugaku looked at Che's back and couldn't help but sigh, what a terrifying talent. A new day and a new beginning, Che came to the ninja school to start his second day at the ninja school. Che is not opposed to life in the ninja school. Although his peers seemed a bit naive, making daily life in the ninja school a bit of a joke, such a platform for learning and cultivation was quite attractive to Che. Che didn't come too early, because he also went to find Fugaku in the morning. By the time Che came to the class, most of the classmates had arrived. And most of the classmates focused their attention on Che, and no one else, just because Che defeated Moonlight Hayate and Hitaki Kakashi yesterday, and his performance was so amazing. Today, Che is wearing the black jacket with the Uchiha family crest printed on it, and the lining and pants are pure white. Coupled with the white hair and cold white skin, it makes the whole person even more refreshing and a bit cold. And those blue eyes added a touch of mystery and charm to Che's temperament. Che walked up to Hong, said hello, then turned over the desk and sat in his seat. Che's handsome and neat behavior once again attracted the attention of the girls in the class. There were also a few girls who came over to strike up a conversation, but they were all politely rejected by Che. This action aroused the side glances of several other girls sitting there, including Yuhi Kuranai and Nohara Rin. So Asuma and Obito successfully formed a united front and cast an unkind look at Che. Fortunately, the teacher came to the classroom soon, and the students settled down and officially started the day's teaching. In today's class, Che read all the words in every textbook, while Hiroshi Yamashita was still explaining the will of fire in class. At this time, Che felt that although class was still necessary, it would be a waste of good time to be confined to the desk like this. So Che tried to refine chakra in class. Che sat at the table, his eyes empty, and his whole body devoted to refining the chakra in his body. Hong next to her noticed Che who was motionless. At first, she thought it was Che who was listening to the class very seriously. However, after a while, Hong noticed that Che was not listening to the class at all, because his eyes were staring straight ahead. Hong stared at Che's empty blue eyes and couldn't help but cover her mouth and smile, it turns out that geniuses can also be in a daze. Hong then held her cute chubby cheeks with her hands and tilted her head to stare at Che. After a while, Che came back to his senses and turned his head to look at Hong. What's wrong? No, it's nothing. Hong's little face turned red and he quickly turned his head away. Che then continued to practice, in a daze. Hong's actions were quite conspicuous in the classroom, and a familiar sneer came from behind Hong. Kurinai knew it was Anko's voice as soon as she heard it, so she turned her head and rolled her eyes at Anko. Beside him, Asuma clenched his fists and crumpled the book hard. Hiroshi Yamashita patted the table on the podium, don't make any small moves in class. However, the bell had already rang at this time. Yamashita Hiroshi's greatest advantage was that he did not delay class, so he took his books and left. The next class was a ninjutsu class, with a young square-faced teacher named Tanakaichi. So Che stopped refining chakra. Tanakaichi announced that this class was a practice class, and the content of the practice was the clone technique. Despite the fact that when Che was fighting Moonlight Hayate and Hitaki Kakashi, both of them used clone techniques and even shadow clones, most of the students in the class were actually in the practice stage of clone techniques. Although Moonlight Hayate is sick all day long, his strength ranks among the top 10 in the entire ninja school. Kakashi was the well-deserved number one before being defeated by Che. I will repeat the specific operation of the clone technique again. Okay, now you can practice. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I will select a few people to demonstrate in the last 10 minutes of this class. Following Tanakaichi's instructions, the students all began to practice individually.
Che is also practicing, and now the chakra in his body is barely enough to use basic ninjutsu like the clone technique. It's a pity that it can't be used a few times. After all, chakra is limited, and even practicing will consume chakra. At this time, Che had a sudden idea that his six eyes could operate the magic power extremely accurately, thus saving the consumption of magic power. The control of the magic power at the peak of his previous life even made his magic power almost unlimited. So if chakra is injected into the six eyes, can the chakra be precisely controlled? Che decisively tried to mobilize the chakra in his body and slowly injected it into his eyes along the meridians in his body. Che felt his eyes burning, and subconsciously closed them to relieve himself. After a while, he opened his eyes again and found that his naked eyes could actually see through the chakra in his body. And the ability to see through spells has not disappeared. So from Che's current perspective, a faint blue spell lingered all over his body, and there was a ray of light blue chakra in the abdomen of his body. Che felt happy in his heart. He didn't expect that the effect of these eyes could also work in this world. However, the effect of the six eyes of chakra is not as great as imagined. Since the six eyes are the product of mantra rather than chakra, even if chakra is used for blessing, the effect of six eyes on chakra is far less than the effect on mantra. The difference between the two is probably that the six eyes are a passive skill for mana, infinite blue, while for chakra, it is an active skill to give yourself a blue buff. And now Che's strength also limits the role of the six eyes. Even the six eyes cannot ignore the limitations of its own spell power and chakra quantity. In other words, the six eyes cannot increase Che's total amount of mantra power and chakra. If the spell or ninjutsu used by Che consumes more mana than the total amount of mana, then even having six eyes will not help. And Che has not yet awakened the spell, and only using magic power to strengthen the body does not consume much magic power, so this is not obvious. But ninjutsu is different. Powerful ninjutsu often consumes a lot of chakra, so it exceeds the current range of the six eyes. Of course, this is just Che's high spirits. In fact, for ninja school students, the current chakra combined with the six eyes is completely enough, and it is already a very powerful cheat. Che recalled the details of Tanakaichi's teachings and began to try to use the six eyes of chakra to practice the clone technique. To outsiders, ninjutsu seems to be released by forming a few seals. But in fact the seal is only the most superficial thing. The essence of ninjutsu is to use chakra for transformation to achieve various magical effects. The seals are just tools to help the chakra condense and move. For some masters, it is easy to simplify the seals, and some people can even release ninjutsu with one hand or even without seals. However, these have nothing to do with Che for the time being. Che used the six eyes of chakra to watch the flow of chakra in his body, and at the same time formed seals with his hands and began to try the clone technique. Clone technique. Bang. A naked Che appeared next to him. Ah. Yuri, who had been observing Che next to her, blushed and screamed, then quickly covered her eyes with her hands. Che quickly withdrew his chakra and cancelled the failed clone technique, while leaving a, sorry. Hong quietly opened the gap between her fingers and saw Che continuing to practice as if nothing had happened. Then she breathed a sigh of relief, well, if you don't know how to clone yourself, I can teach you. Hong thought that her clone technique was still up to par, at least at a level higher than Che's unclothed clone. Che waved his hand and said with certainty, no need, I've figured it out. Hong didn't know why, but she always subconsciously chose to believe Che's words. Although she was willing to believe Che, Hong was still afraid that another naked man would appear next to her, so her eyes were a little dodgy. Che, on the other hand, concentrated on observing his body with his six chakra eyes. Che has already discovered the problem just now, which is that there is a deviation in the operation of chakra, resulting in the incomplete form of the clone. This time, just pay attention to the root of chakra. Che said to his heart. Che then used his hands to form the seal of the clone technique, Wei Si Yin. Che's seals are still a bit unfamiliar, and they are basically formed one seal at a time. Yuhi Hong next to her seemed to be very concerned about Che's progress, and couldn't help but turn her cute little face to Che. But at the same time, he covered his eyes with his little hands, leaving only two gaps for observation, planning to cover them up as soon as he saw something he shouldn't see. Clone technique. With a bang, 
Hong saw another Che appear out of thin air. The two chess were exactly the same in appearance and demeanor. The two chess looked at each other and then looked at Hong at the same time, saying in unison, How is it? How is the effect? After careful observation, Hong replied, You can't tell the difference, it's amazing. Che then contacted the clone and at the same time came to the conclusion in his heart, Ordinary people can't see through my clone technique, but my six eyes can. This also means that the clone technique at this time can be used in actual combat. After all, not everyone has six eyes. To be precise, there is no second six eyes in this world. However, this basic clone technique must not be unsolvable in the ninja world, and there must be many ways to see through it. Then Che remembered the physical clone technique that Kakashi had used in the previous battle. This kind of clone technique could not be directly distinguished even with six eyes. Che used the observation power of six eyes to notice the difference between the main body and the clone. Only the subtle differences between them can be distinguished. Che couldn't help but sigh at the subtlety of this clone technique, and lamented that the person who invented this ninjutsu must be a genius. Maybe I can learn this ninjutsu from Kakashi. Che had just mastered the clone technique and was already coveting the more advanced shadow clone technique. He has always been extremely greedy on the road to becoming stronger. At this moment, teacher Tanakaichi interrupted the students who were practicing in Che's thoughts. The practice time is over. Now let's start the demonstration session. Nota Kenta, you go first. An ordinary boy stepped forward and used seals to show a decent clone. The clone's appearance was roughly 80% similar to the original body. At first glance, there was nothing wrong with it, but if you faced a detailed enemy on the battlefield, then not enough anymore. So Tanakaichi first affirmed his level of clone technique, which can be regarded as excellent among ninja students of this age, but later pointed out the deficiencies in the details. Tanaka then asked Noda Kenta to return to his seat, and after looking through the list, he named the next student to present on stage, next, Metkai. Sitting on a seat at the back of the classroom, the boy with watermelon hair and green tights stood up, with an obvious unnatural nervousness on his face, resembling a student who was randomly checked for failing to endorse. Some students in the class started talking when they heard that it was Metkai. Isn't he not good at ninjutsu? Didn't the teacher tell him to go up and make a fool of himself? Ha 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 ha, it's a good show. You can tell by his expression that he doesn't know anything. Che originally didn't care about the classmates who came on stage to show off, but after hearing these words, he understood that Metkai seemed to be the leader of this class. It was precisely because of this that Che used the six eyes of Chakra to see what was special about this young man named Metkai. After all, if he was really worthless, he would not enter the ninja school, unless he was someone like Che. Transfer students who did not even take the entrance exam. What's going on with the meridians in his body? What a strange physique. Chakra circulates in the eight extraordinary meridians of the human body. This is the most basic ninjutsu knowledge in the textbook. However, according to the intelligence feedback Che observed after injecting chakra into the six eyes, Metkai's meridians were very special. Although his meridians were thick and tough, they were almost solid, leaving extremely narrow channels for chakra to circulate. Meridians are the main channels for transporting chakra. If the meridians of ordinary people are smooth plastic water pipes, then Metkai's meridians are a kind of extremely tough rubber pipes. However, the channel in the middle of this rubber pipe is only 10 times that of ordinary water pipes. 1. Under such circumstances, it is at least 10 times more difficult for Metkai to practice ninjutsu than ordinary people, and the narrow chakra channel inherently limits the use of advanced ninjutsu. However, this situation is not without its advantages. If there is a ninjutsu that can instantly increase chakra, then Metkai's meridians can be opened instantly. In this way, not only are there no previous restrictions, but Metkai the toughness of the meridians can also greatly improve the endurance, and it is not a problem to increase the strength dozens of times in an instant. However, Che only analyzed this possibility theoretically, and still rejected the idea in his heart. Not to mention whether there is such a ninjutsu in the ninja world that is extremely suitable for Metkai. Even if there is, it is a secret that is not passed down. Metkai is not a family ninja, so how can there be such a channel? So Che expressed regret for Metkai in his heart, he is a talented person, but it is a pity that he will most likely be buried. 
I saw Metkai walking up to the podium and forming a seal to perform the cloning technique, but in the end, he only had one of his own clothes. The level of this clone is similar to the naked male clone Che used for the first time. The students in the class laughed one after another, laughing at this Konoha crane tale. Tanakaichi silently made a poor judgment on Metkai's talent, this kid got into school all because of his physical skills. I can understand that he is poor in ninjutsu, but this is too bad. If he doesn't know ninjutsu, what's the point? Become a ninja. Go down, you need to practice the clone technique well. Seeing Metkai nodding and walking away, Tanaka Kazuya felt pity for this hard-working student, Kakashi, you come and show it. Even though Kakashi was defeated by Che, it couldn't change the fact that he was a genius. In terms of ninjutsu, Kakashi is almost one level ahead of the rest of the class. Even if he is asked to take the graduation exam now, it will not be a problem. Kakashi stood up nonchalantly. The clone technique was too low level for him. The teacher didn't say that he must show the most basic clone technique anyway, so Kakashi casually showed off the strongest clone technique he had mastered. The art of clones, the art of multiple shadow clones. As bursts of white smoke appeared, Kakashi's shadow clones instantly filled the entire classroom, at least a dozen or twenty of them. The classmates in the class were all amazed at how powerful this move was, but Kakashi didn't care about their reactions, but turned to look at Che. I saw Che's blue eyes staring closely at one of the shadow clones. Kakashi thought that Che was also stunned by this move, so he couldn't help but raise the corners of his mouth with some pride. The upper limit of his shadow clone technique was much higher than when they fought, so Kakashi felt that it was normal for Che to have such a reaction. But what Kakashi didn't notice was that Che's six eyes were glowing slightly, which was a sign that the six eyes were functioning. Che was using his six chakra eyes to carefully observe the chakra flow of the shadow clone, including the chakra flow in Kakashi's body just now when he formed the seal. The ability of the six eyes is to see the power of the spell in detail. After injecting chakra into the six eyes of chakra, you can also see the flow of chakra in detail, and this level of detail is comparable to a sophisticated high-resolution temperature measurement imaging instrument. It allows Che to instantly see through the principles and methods of spells and ninjutsu. Kakashi withdrew his chakra at this time, and Che was separated from the chakra world in his eyes, and thought to himself, the principle has been clarified, and I should be able to succeed if I go back and try it a few times. Kakashi didn't know that his special skills should be seen by Che at this time, so he sat down after receiving unstinting praise from the teacher. Che was picked up by the teacher right after Kakashi, and what Che showed was not the shadow clone he had just learned secretly, but the most basic clone technique. It's not that Che doesn't have the confidence to successfully use the shadow clone, but that Che intends to hide his clumsiness. Che silently sealed up the secretly learned shadow clone technique in his heart and did not intend to reveal it. The level of shadow clone techniques and even multiple shadow clones is not low. Che has just joined Konoha. Showing shadow clones rashly will not only arouse vigilance, but may also expose Che's biggest reliance at present the six eyes. Che plans to find a reasonable explanation before revealing his shadow clone such as the training method he got from his family, or waiting until he opens the Sharingan. Che heard that the Sharingan has the ability to copy ninjutsu, so he can explain what he has learned. Ninjutsu. Che's clone technique should be impeccable, and he was still a freshman, so he was praised by the teacher. The students in the class are also talking about who is more talented, Che or Kakashi. Currently, the popularity of the two is about the same. Although Che has defeated Kakashi, it can be attributed to reasons such as accidental carelessness, and Kakashi is a veteran genius in the class, and his ninjutsu skills displayed are currently higher than Che's, so Kakashi has not at a disadvantage in this confrontation. The fans who support Che claim that Che is more talented and that his learning ability will surpass Kakashi in a short time. In short, neither side can do anything to the other. Che and Kakashi, who were at the center of the confrontation, said they didn't care about this. Talking about victory was meaningless, not to mention Che who didn't care about blind comparisons between children, and even Kaka, who was very competitive with Che. West doesn't care about that either. The day's classes ended quickly, as the classmates who were more talented, Che or Kakashi, dispersed one after another. Che saw that it was still early and planned to go to Konoha's training ground to observe. 
This time, the copying of the shadow clone technique gave Che a taste of the benefits. The copying of the ninjutsu improved his strength very obviously. Before Che awakened the spell, these ninjutsu would become a basis for him to gain a foothold. There are a total of 44 training grounds in Konoha. Except for the 44th training ground, the other training grounds are open to the public all year round. There should be many people practicing ninjutsu. This allows Che to copy a variety of ninjutsu. At least at this stage, the more ninjutsu he masters, the better. But just when Che was packing up and ready to leave, Hong next to him pulled Che back. Che turned around in confusion and saw Hong with a shy smile saying, Go to my house for dinner tonight. My dad asked me to take you with me after school. Che did not refuse. After all, Yuhi Junhong was his father's friend during his lifetime and one of the few connections he had in this village. Good. Hearing Che's answer, Shihi Hong said happily, Yeah, let's go together. Che nodded. Asuma next to him was already a little numb. Against the backdrop of the two people next to him, he felt like an eyesore. Asma clenched her fists and ran away, catching up with the teacher and shouting, Teacher, I want to change my seat. Poor Asma chose to escape. Yuhi Kuranai looked at Asma running away in shock. She didn't know why Asma had such a big reaction. Could it be that he hated herself? At this time, Che interrupted Hong's thoughts, which direction is your home? Che guessed the reason for Asuma's reaction. It was just because he was jealous after seeing the interaction between himself and Yuhi Hong. Children in this world are quite mature. Hong came to his senses and then brought Che to his home. Yuhi Hong's home is in a pretty good location, close to the center of the village. Hong walked between the two at this time and interrupted the silence between them. Dad, are the meals ready? Yuhi Junhong came out of the memory of her old friend and replied, It has been prepared in advance. It is placed in the kitchen. Go and bring it. Hong walked into the kitchen obediently, and Yuri Junhong turned around and asked Che to sit down. Sit down, little Che, just treat this place as your own home. Anyway, you have no one at home. Come to my house to eat every night from now on and try my cooking. And by the way, make my house a little more lively. Che politely planned to decline, but Yuhi Junhong seemed a little insistent on this, and Che couldn't refuse any more. Thank you uncle. Yuhi Junhong smiled with satisfaction, you and Hong are about the same age. She is less than a year older than you. You two also have a companion together, so it is convenient for you to study and practice. Che looked at Yuri Junhong's thin and serious face, which was filled with gentleness and tenderness. It was obvious that Yuri Junhong was a daughter-in-law. Che nodded obediently to meet Yuri Junhong. Yuhi Hong came over with large and small plates of food. Che immediately stood up and took the plates and put them away. Together, they filled the dining table with food. Yuhi Junhong now had a satisfied smile on her lips, and took out her chopsticks and handed them to the two of them. The three of them sat down and enjoyed a sumptuous meal. During the meal, Yuhi Junhong told Hong what she had just said to Che, asking them to have dinner at home together in the future and to help each other when encountering difficulties. Compared to the calm and calm Che, Hong's reaction was much greater, and even the movements of picking up vegetables became a little unnatural. However, Yuhi Hong did not refuse. She just kept repeating in her heart that he was the younger brother and he was the younger brother to pull her thoughts away from the love affair between a man and a woman. After all, his father's words really seemed like he had found a child foster husband for himself. After the meal, Che took the initiative to stay and help wash the dishes before leaving. When Che left Yuhi's house, it was already dark. Fortunately, Che has a good memory and has already memorized the route from the Yuhi family to the Uchiha family residence. Che wanted to go home directly, but was stopped by a group of acquaintances on the way. It was the Uchiha Bronze Fire, Uchiha Iron Fire brothers and others who were unfamiliar to each other. Che originally thought that the Uchiha Bronze Fire was here to cause trouble again, but unexpectedly, the Uchiha Bronze Fire pounced on Che when he saw it. Brother Che, you have to make the decision for us. We Uchiha are being bullied. Tongwo hugged Che's thigh and burst into tears, completely different from his previous attitude towards Che. Che was a bit of a germaphobe. He shook his legs twice to throw the copper fire away and asked, what happened? Tongwo then explained the whole story clearly. It turned out that Tongwo and the others planned to find a place to practice after school, 
but the family's training ground was under maintenance, so they went to the public number four training ground. They were practicing well, but a group of students from the Hyuga clan took a fancy to the place where a few people were staying, and they refused to give up their seats, so a conflict broke out. But there seemed to be a senior member of the Hyuga clan. Tongwo and others were beaten to the point where they were unable to fight back and were driven away in despair. Brother, those Hyuga clan members are too arrogant. They beat us without telling us, and they even insulted our reputation as Uchiha, saying that our reputation as the strongest family in Konoha is in vain. Brother, you have to help us make the decision. The few people nearby also imitated Tonghuo and called him Big Brother, and all asked Che to come forward to avenge them. Tonghuo lifted up the clothes of himself and his younger brother Tai Huo, revealing dense and terrifying red spots. Brother Che, this was all caused by the senior class. It's still hurting now. Che observed with his six eyes and couldn't help but feel shocked. He saw that the acupuncture points in the bodies of copper fire and iron fire were blocked by the remaining chakra of another person. It might be difficult to condense chakra in a short period of time. This must be the work of the Hyuga clan. It seems to be a ninjutsu that uses fingers to condense chakra and penetrate it into the enemy's body to disrupt his chakra. No, it is a taijutsu. Che used his six eyes to quickly analyze the Hyuga clan's methods, which seemed to be a bit tricky. Faced with the requests of several people, Che did not blindly agree. Instead, he first came to Tongwo and Tiehuo, signaled the two not to move, and injected his own chakra into their bodies, removing the remaining chakra from the Hyuga tribe. Carrot. The two of them instantly felt that the congestion in their bodies disappeared. Tongwo couldn't help but sigh. Miracle doctor, brother, the medicine can cure the disease. Tiehuo held it in for a long time before he could say the words, thank you, brother. Che responded at this time, the Hyuga clan is quite capable, I will help you teach them a lesson, but not now, it's getting late. You guys go back to rest first, and take me to settle accounts with them after school tomorrow. Quote. Hearing that Che had agreed to take revenge, Tonghuo and others were overjoyed, and after agreeing on a time with Che, they ran away. On the way, Taihuo asked a little unsurely, Do you think brother Che can win? Tonghuo changed his previous flattery, and his eyes revealed a completely different shrewdness from his younger brother, My intuition tells me that this guy is stronger than those Hyuga clan members. If he can't even defeat those Hyuga clan members, then he is not worthy. I will be your big brother. Obviously, Tongwo just used the so-called eldest brother as a revenge tool to regain his face. On the other hand, Che also saw Tongwo's shrewdness. He called out, big brother, and wanted to fight with those Hanata. No matter whether he could avenge Tongwo or not, at least he could fight in such a way that both sides would lose. So Tongwo's purpose that's it. But Che still agreed. He had heard about the reputation of the Hyuga clan, and it seemed that they were also a big clan in the village, and among them were senior Hyuga clan ninja school students. If you can defeat these Hyuga clan members, it will undoubtedly be the best proof of your strength. Che plans to further demonstrate his extraordinary talent to the family in exchange for more attention. However, Che was not prepared to fight an unprepared battle. Che came to the clan leader's house. At this time, Fugue was sitting in his yard. So Che found Fug and told everything about Tongwo and the others. Seeing that Fugaku did not stop him from making trouble for the Hyuga clan, Che asked Fugaku for information about the Hyuga clan. Fugaku mainly told the Hyuga clan's two methods, the Byakugan and the soft fist. As Che guessed, the Ru fist was a physical technique that caused the bronze fire and iron fire to be covered in red spots. The Byakugan is the focus of Che's attention. According to Fugaku, Almost every Hyuga clan member can master this pupil technique, which is as famous as the Sharingan. Its function is to see distance and perspective. The field of vision range is nearly 360 degrees, which can extend for more than 1 kilometer, and can see through all obstacles. Combined with the acupuncture skills of Ru Fist, it can be said to be a killer move. Che knew in his mind that tomorrow's opponent would be a bit difficult, but he could win. After coming to this conclusion, Che left the patriarch's mansion. After Che left, Fugaku looked at the trees in the yard alone and murmured to himself, is it just a conflict between the juniors, or is it the instructions behind the Hyuga clan? The strongest clan in Konoha. 
Oh, do you Hanata think this is what the name means? Is it a good job? Che practiced some practice after returning home and didn't sleep until late at night. The next day, Che went to ninja school as usual. There was nothing special about this day's school life. Perhaps the only thing worth mentioning was that Asuma had already taken the initiative to apply for a seat change, and the person sitting in that seat now was Anko Mitarashi. After school, Shirahong invited Che to go home with her. Che did not agree, but asked her to go back first, saying that she had some things to do. Hong had no choice but to pull Anko away with him a little unhappy. What Che had to do was naturally to resolve the conflicts with the Hyuga clan members that he had promised yesterday. Uchiha Tongwo and his group had already been waiting at the school gate. They bowed to Che and called him Big Brother from a distance, attracting the attention of passers-by. As soon as passers-by saw the Uchiha family crest on the backs of these students, they understood that they were young disciples of Uchiha, and they raised Che's status a lot higher in their hearts. He seems to be an ordinary handsome guy, but to be called Big Brother, respectfully by these Uchiha kids who don't look easy to mess with, he is definitely not someone to be messed with. Just like that, Che's reputation changed from school idol to school bully. Brother, let's go to the fourth training ground and wait. Yesterday, those Hanata said they were attracted to the environment there, and they will definitely go there today. Tong Huo came up and said. Che nodded slightly and led a few people to the fourth training ground. Che is still unfamiliar with most places in Konoha. After all, he usually travels between his home and the ninja school, plus Yuhi Hong's house, three points in one line. He usually practices in the open space next to his home. He rarely even goes to the family training ground, let alone the public training ground. Although the number four training ground is also on the edge of the village, it is still closer than other training ground. A few people walked for ten minutes and arrived at the place. The training ground was very large, and the location where bronze fire brought Che was in the corner of the training ground. There were many wooden stakes inserted into the ground here. The wooden piles are pitted and full of scars. It is obvious at a glance that they have been used for practicing physical arts for many years. Che walked forward and observed the wooden piles carefully, and found that the latest mark on them was a shallow pit the size of a finger. Che naturally thought of copper fire and iron fire's injuries yesterday, as well as the information Fugaku gave him. Soft fist. Che determined the name of this attack method. Tong Huo nodded repeatedly. Yes, yes, it's Ru Fist. That person also said it was gossip or something like that. As soon as the soft fist was mentioned, Tai Huo next to him subconsciously covered the wound on his body, as if it was still aching. He didn't know if it was a psychological effect or because the Hyuga clan's soft fist was so overbearing. Che looked at Tai Huo's reaction and sighed, it's called a soft fist, but the strength is not soft at all. It seems like today will be interesting. When Tongwo heard this, he started to be miserable again and cried, yes, brother, those Hanata gang are so cruel. They simply don't save face for us. If they don't save face for us, don't they mean they don't save face for you, big brother? After hearing this, Che waved his hands and said, no need to provoke me. Now that I'm here, I will definitely help you fight back. You can rest assured about this. Seeing that his purpose was too obvious, Tongwo had to smile awkwardly and flattered him again. Brother said that, we can rest assured. Brother is mighty. Taihuo clenched his fists and said, I'm going to beat you back today. Tongwo slapped Taihuo on the head and said, forget it, don't go up and be embarrassed. Taihuo put down his hand in grievance, but there was still unwillingness in his eyes. Che glanced at Tongwo playfully. Although this man was cunning and versatile at a young age, he was quite concerned about his younger brother. Obviously Tongwo didn't want Taihuo to go up and get beaten again, but the dull Taihuo didn't seem to understand his brother's good intentions all at once. It didn't take long for the person everyone was waiting for arrived. I saw a group of boys of different heights but all with pure white eyes walking over. Don't you Uchiha have long memories? Or do you want to be beaten again? This is already Hanata's territory, get out of here. A boy from the Hyuga clan with a round face yelled arrogantly, completely ignoring the one who came first. Che and others took it seriously. But Tong Huo stood up, raised his chest and raised his head and retorted, it's you who should get out. Today, 
with my brother Che here, you guys are going to get beaten. Tong Huo's words were quite powerful, and they actually frightened the round-faced boy for a moment. At this time, the tallest Hyuga boy said, Is it the Uchiha Che who defeated Hitaki Kakashi? Upon hearing this, Tong Huo became even more domineering and said proudly, That's my eldest brother. He looked as if the one who defeated Kakashi was not someone else but himself. The tall Hanata said disdainfully, Hitaki Kakashi is just a first-year student, how can he be so powerful no matter how powerful he is? I am about to become a genin, am I still afraid of you? After finishing speaking, the tall Hanata looked at Che with provocative eyes. After all, Che's white hair and blue eyes were so recognizable that people could see it at a glance. Che stared calmly at the tall Hanata in front of him, unmoved at all. The tall Hanata only felt that her face had been damaged, so she said arrogantly, I'll give you face. If you, Uchiha Che, lower your heads and surrender, and give us this venue, I can let you go back safe and sound. Otherwise, don't blame us for being rude. Che said three words calmly, you don't deserve it. It was these three words that made Tong Huo and others excitedly call their elder brother mighty, and also made the faces of the Hyuga clan members change drastically, as if they had eaten shit. If you don't drink a toast, you'll be fined, Che Uchiha, you're finished. The tall Hanata obviously couldn't accept that the man in front of her, who was three years younger than herself, dared to act so coquettishly in front of her. After saying this, the tall Hanata was ready to take action, and the Hanata around him were also ready to make a move. Tongwo and the others, who had suffered losses under these Hanata hands, were frightened for a while and lost their previous momentum. The tall Hanata began to look down upon the Uchiha in front of him and shouted, Hanata is the strongest clan in Konoha. After saying that, he rushed up directly. Che felt bored when he saw such an unorganized move, shook his head slightly, poured the spell power into his whole body, jumped up, and flew forward with a kick. The tall Hanata hurriedly raised her arms to block, but was still knocked several meters away by the huge force, and fell onto the grass leaving a trace of embarrassment. Brother Cheng, the round-faced Hanata and several other Hanata lost their leadership in an instant and gathered around the tall Hanata in panic. The tall Hanata named Hayuga Makoto only felt pain in his arms, but what hurt more was his face. Although Che didn't slap him in the face, it was undoubtedly a very loud slap in the face for Hanata Cheng to make himself look so ugly in front of so many younger brothers and members of the Uchiha clan. Hanata Cheng grimaced in pain, but he still pushed away the people around him, stood up with difficulty, and moved his hands that were still not in control. I'm looking down on you, but you just have brute strength. Everything is useless in front of Bayakugan and Soft Fist. Hanata Cheng said harshly. Che didn't pay attention to these words, but was paying attention to the differences between Hanata Makoto and the other Hanata around him. Among these people, only Hayuga Makoto seemed to have exposed his forehead frankly, while the others covered their foreheads with cloth belts, scarves and other accessories. If it was just like this, Che wouldn't think there was anything strange. But the problem is that the six eyes can see deeper things through the surface, that is, under the cover, there are certain restrictions imposed on the brains of the Hyuga clan, which restrict their vision and strength. This may be the reason why these people only obey Sun Jiang's orders. The restriction should be a symbol of status and a manifestation of subordinate status. However, Che didn't know the specific details. He planned to go back and ask clan chief Fugaku. As a high-ranking official in Konoha and the head of a large clan, he should know this very well. Hinata Cheng recovered his arms while Che was studying the mysteries of several people's foreheads. Although he was still a little numb and sore when waving, it no longer affected his basic activities. Hayuga Makoto formed a seal with his hands, white eyes. I saw veins popping up around Hinata Cheng's eyes, and his eyes suddenly became sharper. Che noticed that a large amount of chakra from Hinata Makoto's body was pouring into his eyes, which caused the overload around the eyes to cause this phenomenon. Compared with the Uchiha clan's Sharingan, the Hyuga clan's Bayakugan has a much lower threshold for use. Even the few ninja school students in front of you who have not yet graduated can open it. Everyone in the Hyuga group in front of them rolled their eyes, and the leader, Hyuga Cheng, even prepared a soft fist posture. This made Tong Huo and others who had been severely taught by this method start to feel scared, and they hid behind Che. 
Hinata Cheng sneered, it's useless to hide. In front of these white eyes, you have nowhere to hide. Hayuga Makoto lowered his body, put one hand in front and the other behind, and took a soft fist stance. Soft fist technique, Hinata Cheng's aura suddenly changed, making Che also feel wary. The two were in a stalemate for a moment, and soon Hinata Cheng couldn't bear to take action first. He stepped forward with very methodical steps and struck out quickly with two palms, two bagua palms. Che chose to avoid the sharp edge temporarily and turned sideways to avoid it. Hinata Makoto continued to pursue, four palms, eight palms, sixteen palms, thirty-two palms. After finishing a set of thirty-two bagua palms, Hinata Cheng was panting and physically exhausted. But Che looked relaxed and comfortable, as if he had just taken a leisurely stroll. But in his heart, Che still admires the Hyuga clan's set of soft boxing techniques. He believes that it is a big family that has been passed down for many years, and it really has its own foundation. Che imitated Hinata Cheng's example and concentrated chakra on his fingertips. Then he took action instantly and pointed a finger at the acupuncture point on Hinata Cheng's chest to force him back. Hinata Cheng was suddenly startled and thought to himself, why does this move look so like a soft fist? Little did he know that this was a move that Che imitated on a whim after seeing through the principles of soft fist with his six eyes. At this time, Hinata Cheng had lost his previous confidence and hurriedly called on the people around him to rush forward. However, I saw Che walking between several people, not even a leaf touching him among the random flowers. You must know that Hinata Cheng's complete set of 32 bagua palms can't even touch the corners of Che's clothes, let alone the fragmentary soft boxing skills mastered by these ragtag group of people. Che's flexibility is also due to the powerful insight of the six eyes and the strong physical fitness brought by the enhanced spell power. These two cheats brought from the past life make Che's strength far beyond that of his peers. And Che didn't just dodge without fighting back. While dodging, Che stretched out his fingers to poke the acupuncture points of several people. What was even more clever was that he could also use the flaws of the siege by several people to let their soft fists hit themselves. Hinata Cheng finally regrouped and rushed into the crowd, but Che quickly hit his acupuncture point. His whole body was numb for an instant. In the moment of paralysis, he was kidnapped by Che. Che pulled Hinata Cheng around and turned around, just in time for him to help him block the round face. Hinata's palm. Hinata Cheng almost spit out a mouthful of old blood and cursed angrily, don't you have eyes? The round-faced Hinata was extremely frightened and humbly apologized hurriedly. Che didn't give Hinata any face, and directly took his arm and threw him away, and the target was the round-faced Hinata. There was a bang, accompanied by the screams of the two people, and the two people were smashed together, unable to get up again. Che glanced at the other people, which made them tremble and for a moment they were afraid to step forward. So Che took the initiative and defeated everyone with three punches and two kicks. He also piled them together and sat on top. This scene made Tong Huo and others watching the battle on the sidelines couldn't help but tighten their anus, because it was them who ended up like this last time, and they couldn't help but sigh in their hearts. Fortunately, they recognized the eldest brother Che, and they wouldn't have to be beaten in the future. Among the people watching the battle, Tong Huo reacted the fastest. The leader shouted, Brother Che is mighty. Tie Huo and others shouted, Big brother is mighty. Big brother is mighty. Che signaled several people to quiet down, and the volume gradually became smaller. So Che lowered his head and asked the people who were pressed under him, Do you still want this place? The few people who were suppressed did not dare to reply. They were all waiting for Hinata Cheng to speak. Hinata Cheng was pressed on the second to last floor and said with difficulty, no more. Satisfied, Che walked on the backs of several people to the ground, and the people who were built into the human tower got up one after another. Hinata Cheng covered his swollen cheek and glanced at Che unwillingly. If looks could kill, Che would have died countless times just now. Che noticed Hinata Cheng's gaze and turned around to look. He was so frightened that Hinata quickly looked away and ran away with a few people in despair. On the way, he did not forget to insult and teach the younger brothers around him. In his words, he mentioned the clan family and the branch family, and the branch family should protect the clan family, etc. Che was keenly aware of it. During the fight just now, 
the round-faced Hinata's forehead hairband came loose, allowing Che to see the green X-shaped curse mark on his forehead. It was this curse mark that caused the restriction of brain vision observed by Rokugan. The Hyuga family is really incompetent with curse seals, branch families, and clan families. Did they use this method to ensure the continuation of the family? Through these few keywords, Che could roughly deduce the clan system of the Hyuga clan. Che doesn't think highly of this. This system is simply killing the family's potential. Compared to the system and customs of the Hyuga clan, Che was relatively satisfied with the customs of the Uchiha clan. Uchiha has always respected strength. No matter whose son his son is, he will be recognized as long as he is strong enough. This is one of the reasons why Che gained recognition from the family so quickly. At this time, Tong Huo and others behind Che came to Che's side respectfully, bowed and said, Thank you, brother, for helping me. Che waved his hands, not caring about their thanks. In fact, the reason why Che took action was just out of interest, and he was interested in the rivals of the Hyuga clan. Rufus and White Eyes did make Che feel a little interesting, but the strength of those people was nothing worthy of praise. However, Che noticed that the attitude of several people towards him seemed to be much more sincere this time. Not to mention Tihan and Tiehuo who was already moved to pieces, even the shrewd Tongwo's attitude towards Che was a little more sincere, and the other younger brothers were even more sincere towards Che. He looked like he was following his lead. There was no harm in Che accepting these young men, so he accepted it calmly. Okay, if there's nothing else, I'll leave. Che said. Tongwo asked, Brother, are you interested in having dinner with us? I'll treat you to my little brother. Che gently scratched his nose with his fingers and declined Tongwo's kindness. No, I want to eat with others tonight. After saying that, Che waved and left, leaving Uchiha Tongwo and others looking at each other. After a while, Tonghuo slammed his palms and said with a look of sudden realization, If you can have dinner with your eldest brother, your relationship must be extraordinary. We have to go and find out, so that we can have a good relationship with your eldest brother. Taihuo and others also felt that what they said was reasonable, and it was obvious that they had reached a consensus on holding Chase thigh tightly. At Yuhi's home, Yuhi Hong tidied up the table. The table was filled with delicious food, and it didn't look like it was home cooked. It looked like it was taken away from a restaurant. It looked exquisite and looked expensive. Obviously, as the only daughter of Konoha Jun and Yuhi Mako, Yuhi Kurenai has quite some savings. Yuhi Kurenai sat alone in her seat, twiddling her fair and beautiful fingers in a somewhat bored manner. Just then the doorbell rang. Yuhi Hong immediately stood up happily, but she soon realized that such a reaction was too unreserved, so she patted her cheek twice to calm herself down, and then walked to the door and opened it. As expected, it was Che Uchiha outside the door. Seeing that it was red, Che walked in and asked casually, isn't uncle here? Hong explained, my dad is out on a mission and may not return to Konoha this month, so he left a sum of money for me to pay for the food for the two of us this month. Hong explained in great detail, while Che nodded calmly. As a ninja, the time spent out on missions is basically longer than the time spent idle at home, not to mention that Yuhi Junhong is still a junin. At this time, Che put on his shoes and looked at Hong and said, your face seems a little red. After that, he went to the bathroom. His hands were a little dirty after a fight. Che's misophobia did not allow him to do this in this situation. For meals, except under special circumstances. Hong stayed where he was, silently touching his slightly hot face, feeling annoyed in his heart. Why do you act like this every time you are alone with him? After washing his hands, Che came to the dining table, looked at it and said, did you buy this from outside? Che came to Konoha and had never eaten outside. I usually buy food at the Uchiha station and cook my own meals. After all, both parents died, which made the already poor family even worse. Only then did Hong react. He walked over and replied, yes, I brought it home from that new barbecue restaurant called Barbecue Q. Don't you like barbecue? By the way, there's also sugar. Hong said as he walked into the kitchen and brought out a plate of white sugar. Che showed a smile, took the sugar and said, Thank you, I'm interested. The two of them sat together and ate barbecue. The barbecue restaurant provided a simple wooden oven with a charcoal fire inside. 
Chape picked up the shelf and placed the meat on it piece by piece, waiting quietly for the barbecue to become cooked. The sizzling oil scene was a wonderful sight that Che had not seen in a long time. While waiting for the barbecue to be cooked, Hong asked Che what happened just now, what did you mean when you said you had something to do after school? Che didn't escape anything and answered truthfully, go and have a fight. Such an understatement frightened Hong. The association between leaving school and fighting can easily make people think of some violent incidents. Hong quickly lifted Che's clothes to see if Che was injured. To Hong's surprise, there were no scars on Che's body, only white and smooth skin. Soon Hong realized the offense of her move, quickly put down her hand, lowered her head and murmured in a voice similar to that of a mosquito, I'm sorry. Che smiled nonchalantly and said, those opponents won't hurt me. After that, Che saw that the roast meat was cooked, so he gave Hong two slices, eat it. Che himself put the sugar at hand, picked up the meat slices with chopsticks and dipped them in the sugar to eat, with an intoxicated look on his face. The two major hobbies in life merged into one, which made Che, who had always been calm, find it difficult to control himself. Seeing this, Hong also turned his attention to the barbecue and started eating. I don't know if it was the temperature of the barbecue or some other reason, but Hong's cute little face stayed red until Che left the house. Another day passed. The next day, Che came to school as usual, but heard many rumors about himself along the way. That's Che Uchiha, right? He's really handsome. Hey, don't look at how fair and tender he is, but he is now the bully of our school. Really? What's going on? I heard that he took the Uchiha people to beat up a bunch of Hyuga clan members yesterday. Among the people who were beaten were seniors who were about to graduate. So powerful, but then the Hyuga clan is going to settle accounts with him. Ha ha ha, I heard that the Hyuga clan sent people to Uchiha to ask for an explanation, but they were kicked out directly. You see that Uchiha tried so hard to protect him, don't you know how powerful he is? Wow, this is really awesome. Under these various rumors, Che's image in the minds of the students inexplicably grew taller and became a person who was not easy to mess with. Che didn't pay much attention to this, just treating it as a child's play. When I came to the class, I thought that my current reputation was not good, and those little fans would calm down. But he didn't expect that a little girl of his age would do this. Che was so annoyed that he had to scare away the girls who came around him with a cold face, so that he could attend class normally. During a class break, Yuhi Hong took Anko out to use the toilet. When she came back, Yuri Hong changed from her normal state and said to Che angrily, Go out and take care of your people, don't let them talk nonsense. Che was a little confused, but looking at Kurinai's reaction and Midarashi Anko's playful expression next to her, it was not difficult to guess that they must have heard something outside. So Che walked out of the classroom and saw Uchiha Tongwo and others. Tongwo came up to her with a smile on her face, gave her a thumbs up and said, Brother, my sister-in-law is so pretty. Che instantly understood why Yuri Hong reacted the way she did just now, so he slapped Tong Huo on the head, making Tong Huo shrink his neck in fear. Don't scream in the future, we are just friends. Only then did Tong Huo realize that he had tried to flatter him by asking around but ended up flattering him, and he quickly said that he had been careless. Che saw Tongwo's appearance and must have remembered it. He was about to turn around and leave, but suddenly he turned around and said as if he remembered something, also, there have been a lot of rumors recently. Control yourself. I don't like to hear these rumors. Tongwo nodded repeatedly, and Che returned to his seat in the classroom. I already told you that they won't bark indiscriminately in the future. Yuhi Hong just hummed softly, and she didn't know whether she was happy or unhappy. Anyway, after some advice from Che and no one knew what means Tongwo and others used, the rumors about Che and Hong in the school have indeed disappeared, at least they have not reached Che's ears anymore. The days in the ninja school passed quickly. In the blink of an eye, Che had been in the school for a semester. It's time for graduation at the end of the semester. The ninja school system is for fifth grade, and Che's current class is still in the first grade. The current graduation season of Konoha 42 seems to have nothing to do with their current class. It stands to reason that they will have to wait until Konoha 46 to graduate. However, this class has a student who is about to graduate, Kakashi Hitaki. Kakashi, do you really want to graduate early? 
Nohara Lin asked with concern. Well, yes, Lord Hokage has agreed. Kakashi nodded. Humph, what's the big deal? Uchiha Obito said jealously. In fact, the news that Kakashi graduated early has spread throughout the school. The son of Konoha White Fang seemed to be beginning to show off his extraordinary talents. If Kakashi really graduates this time, he will become the youngest genin in Konoha's history. Next to Che, Yuhi Hong was also interested in Kakashi's early graduation. Che, do you think Kakashi can graduate early? It's easy to graduate early with his strength. Che said his true thoughts. In fact, when Kakashi first entered school, his strength had already reached the level of an ordinary graduate. After a semester of training, his strength had already exceeded the level that could successfully graduate. Then why don't you also take the graduation exam in advance? Aren't you about the same strength as Kakashi? Kurinai asked again. Che was silent for a while and then only said, Graduating early may not be a good thing. Hong didn't understand what Che meant, but nodded in understanding. The relationship between the two has become quite familiar after a semester of getting along, and they have an understanding of each other. Therefore, Hong Mingqing's ideas are often very far-sighted, and it doesn't matter if you don't understand them for a while. In Che's view, graduating early can certainly make Kakashi the youngest genin in the history of Konoha, but becoming a genin comes at a price. That means losing free time for cultivation and having to be busy with tasks large and small. Che has been to the task collection office in Konoha and has seen that most of the tasks to be collected there are meaningless low-level tasks, such as catching kittens, feeding puppies, picking up garbage, and patrolling. Most of these tasks are done by Jenin and Chunin. Che gets a headache when he thinks about doing such tasks after graduation. It is simply a waste of life. And no matter what task you are doing, it will take up your cultivation time. You must know that Che's current age is the golden age of cultivation, and the foundation for becoming a strong man in the future is laid at this stage. If your training time is occupied by various tasks at this stage, it will take more time to make up for the lost foundation in the future. So Che's current idea is to graduate with the big army honestly. After successfully being promoted to Genin, immediately try to be promoted to Chunin, so that you can get rid of those meaningless low-level tasks as much as possible. Final exams and graduation exams are held simultaneously. After the final exam, everyone in Che's class came to wait outside the graduation exam room because Kakashi was still taking the exam inside. While everyone was discussing the difficulty of this year's final exam, they were also discussing whether Kakashi could pass the graduation exam. The result of the discussion is that everyone thinks that Kakashi can pass the exam because he is Kakashi. There was only one person who seemed to be dissatisfied with this, and that was Obito Uchiha. Che was not very familiar with this fellow member of his race, but he could also see that Uchiha Obito and Kakashi had a bad relationship on the surface, but it was just an awkwardness between children. The reason for this awkwardness is the little girl Nohara Rin next to Uchiha Obito. And there was another person who saw this, and that was Serutobi Asuma. Unlike Che who saw this through his experience and vision in his previous life, Asma purely felt the same way. Asuma and Obito can be said to have a heart-to-heart -heart at this moment. Both of them like a girl in their hearts, Obito likes Nohara Rin, and Asuma likes Yuhi Kuranai. But the girls they like all admire a genius, just like Nohara Rin admires Kakashi, Yuhi Kuranai also admires Uchiha Che. But unlike Obito's persistence, Asuma has let go of Yuhi Kuranai in his heart. Asma considers herself a smart person. After a semester of having a hot face and a cold butt, Asuma clearly saw that Yuhi Kuranai and herself were no longer in a relationship. Originally, I and Yuhi Hong chatted quite harmoniously, and they stayed together every day. Just when the situation was getting better, Che Uchiha came and everything changed, and Kuranai Yuhi began to ignore him. This difference completely disheartened Asuma. In her heart, Asuma sympathized with Obito, but she also had some admiration and envy. Needless to say, sympathy, but admiration is for Obito's sincerity and dedication to Nohara Rin, which Asuma is ashamed of. And envy is envy. Nohara Rin is actually very good to Obito. Everyone can see this. Just as the students outside were bustling and talking, the door to the examination room opened. 
Kakashi was wearing a black top and a green scarf, and the mask on his face was as usual. The only difference was that there was an iron forehead protector on his forehead. The forehead protector is engraved with the Konoha logo, which is a symbol of becoming a ninja. So it goes without saying that everyone knows that Kakashi successfully passed the graduation exam. Everyone congratulated Kakashi one after another. The watermelon-headed boy, Metkai, raised his hands excitedly and said, Kakashi, you are worthy of being my opponent. You have become a genin so quickly. It seems that I have to work harder to practice. Lin smiled softly and said, Kakashi, congratulations on becoming a genin. Yuhi Hong and Che stood together, silently applauding Kakashi. Asuma was also applauding among the crowd, but there was only one person who did not congratulate Kakashi, and that was Obito. Kakashi took the initiative to walk up to Obito and look at him, as if waiting for Obito's congratulations. However, what was waiting was Obito angrily yelled at Cassie, I won't congratulate you. Obito then ran away on his own. Most of the classmates in the class didn't care about Obito, the weakest person in the class, but they just felt that it was really inappropriate for him to cause such a thing on such an occasion. Only Nohara Rin kept looking at Obito's back with a concerned expression. After Nohara Rin congratulated Kakashi again, she left early, apparently to comfort Obito who just ran away in anger. All this fell into Che's eyes, but Che didn't care. Che knew Nohara Rin's character and Obito's attitude towards Rin, so Rin would definitely be able to successfully appease Obito Uchiha. Kakashi graduated early and started his ninja career, while other students in the class ushered in their own holidays. Holiday life is more free than school life. Ninja school has no holiday homework, so the holiday time belongs to you. But Che's vacation and school life are no different. Because Che didn't plan to relax or go out for fun during the holidays, but continued to practice hard. This world is not much different from the world in his previous life. Che believes that strength is the basis for a foothold, no matter which world he is in. Moreover, the holidays gave Che more free time to practice since he no longer had to take those meaningless cultural classes in school. The training resources around Che are quite abundant. In addition to the relics left by his father, Fugaku and Yuhi Junhong also gave Che a lot of help. Moreover, Che also has a pair of six chakra eyes that can clearly see the principles of ninjutsu and can be used to copy other people's moves. In this way, there are many places where you can practice, so Che has a full schedule during the holiday. Ninjutsu, Taijutsu, Genjutsu, and Ninjutsu are all exposed to rain and dew. Except for going out every day to have dinner with Yuhi Hong, he basically practices in the open space next to his house. One day while eating, Yuhi Hong offered to practice with Che, Che, let's practice together tomorrow. I want to start practicing the illusion that my father taught me. In fact, Che wanted to refuse in his heart, because Hong's current strength was too different from Che's, and his training progress with Hong was not consistent. But that day, Shiri Jun Hong was present. He happily patted Che and said, Okay, okay, you can practice together. Hong, you should practice with Che during the holidays. His illusion talent is stronger than yours. You should study hard with Che. When Che heard this, he had no reason to refuse. He could only say obediently to Yuhi Junhong and Yuhi Hong, No problem, Hong and I will practice together in the future. In this way, the two made an appointment to practice together at Konoha's training ground every afternoon. The next day, Che first came to Hong's house to gather, and then the two of them walked to Konoha's third training ground together. On the way, the two met their classmates, Hitaki Kakashi and Metkai. Metkai pulled Kakashi, who was rolling his eyes, on the road, and said, I want to help you reconcile with Obito. The best way to reconcile between men is to exercise together. This is youth, Kaka. West. Kakashi said reluctantly, I'm very busy. Metkai said with a look of disbelief, you didn't even wear a forehead protector today. You must have no mission. You are still hiding in the bookstore reading weird books. How can you be as busy as you said? Kakashi, who was exposed, looked a little embarrassed and could only agree to Metkai's request. Metkai was very happy and said, I have made an appointment with Obito to meet with us. He must also want to reconcile with you. Metkai was chatting with Kakashi on the road. At this time, Che and Hong passed by. 
The four of them were going in the same direction, so they said hello and walked together. Passing through the center of the village, Chase Six Eyes observed something unusual. It was a huge circular barrier that seemed to be suppressing some powerful force. At this time, a beautiful red-haired woman stood at the edge of the barrier. Behind the woman stood two mysterious people wearing cloaks and masks, who looked to be of high status. In front of the woman was a handsome young man with yellow hair. Well, behind him was a group of people who seemed to be waiting for him. The two people were talking, which attracted Che's attention. According to the information obtained through the six eyes, the yellow-haired man is very powerful, even more powerful than Yuhi Meiko and Uchiha Fugaku. But what shocked Che even more was that the power contained in the woman's body was even more terrifying. It was a power that Che had never seen before, full of violence and tyranny. I'm afraid the entire barrier exists to suppress this power. Yuhi Kuranai noticed that Che was looking at the two people talking, so she introduced Che thoughtfully. The red-haired sister is the nine-tailed Jinchuriki Uzumaki Kashina of our village, and the person opposite him is the genius Junin Nam Feng Shui. Yes, he is Lord Jiraiya's disciple. As the only daughter of Konoha Junin Yuhi Meiko, Kuranai has more knowledge in the village than Che. Tailed beasts, Jinchuriki, and Jiraiya, one of the Sanin of Konoha, even Che, who had been in Konoha for less than a year, had heard of these. Che heard Hong's introduction and roughly understood the status of these two people. They could both be said to be high-level officials in Konoha. The few people walked closer, and Kakashi and Metkai saw Obito Uchiha waiting in the barrier. Metkai happily raised his hand in greeting, and Kakashi and Obito also shook their hands. The relationship between the two seemed to be less tense than before. The three of them went to practice physical skills together, with Metkai taking the lead and running around the village. But obviously, only Matt Kale was among them, and both Kakashi and Obito were speechless about this kind of exercise. Che was currently listening to the conversation between Namikaze Minato and Uzumaki Kashina. Namikaze Minato said apologetically, I'm sorry Kashina. I came here to tell you. I'm going to practice ninjutsu somewhere else today. Uzumaki Kashina put her hands on her hips and asked with an unhappy expression, other place. Quote dot dot dot. The third training ground. Namikaze Minato was keenly aware of Kashina's emotions, and opened his hand to explain. It's not, it's because that ninjutsu has not been completed yet and is still very dangerous. I don't want you to injure it. When Uzumaki Kashina got angry, her red hair flew up. She pointed at Minato Namibumi angrily and said, If you hate being with me, just say so. Namikaze Minato hurriedly explained, I have never thought of it that way. At this time, the companions behind Namikaze Minato urged Minato to report the mission to the Hokage. Namikaze Minato could only turn around and leave a message, Sorry. I'm leaving, see you later. And left. Uzumaki Kashina subconsciously wanted to follow, but was stopped by two masked men behind her. All this fell into Che and Hong's eyes. Kurinai seemed to empathize with Kashina's pain and said from the side, Those two are Anbu responsible for protecting the Jinchuriki, but the Jinchuriki can't even go out with the people he likes. It's really pitiful. Kurinai felt pity for the Jinchuriki's situation, and when she said the words, the person she loves, she glanced at Che very empathetically, as if she was putting herself in Kashina's perspective. But Che next to him had completely different concerns. The power of the tailed beast is not within my reach right now, but I can try the new technique under development that Feng Shuiman just mentioned. The power of this ninjutsu, which is considered dangerous even by strong men, can be imagined. Che became curious about the new technique in the water gate. So Che said to Hong, Let's go to the third training ground. In Konoha's third training ground, Che and Hong found a secluded corner in the bright sunshine and started practicing. Hong's initial training goal was illusion. Genjutsu is the specialty of the Yuhi family. Although the Yuhi family is not a ninja family, it is also a well-known illusion school in Konoha village. There are at least three or four generations here that extend to Yuhi Hong. Kurinai Yuhi inherited her father's talent for illusions, but Kurinai Yuhi was busy with work and neglected to teach Kurinai Yuhi herself. And Yuhi Junhong saw Che's talent again, mainly the talent for illusion. So this time Che brought Hong to practice, and Yuhi Junhong specifically asked Che to take Yuhi Hong to practice her own illusions. 
Che naturally agreed, after all, this way he could legitimately practice the collection of illusions given to them by Yuhi Junhong. We started practicing the illusion technique. This is an illusion technique that Uncle Jen Hong personally showed me before. It was also recorded in the collection of illusion techniques that my father left me. I have mastered it now, and I can count it as having some experience. Teach you. Che started his own teaching, saying that the two of them practiced together, but in fact it was mainly Che who taught and Hong who learned. However, teaching is mutually beneficial, and Che can also improve his own understanding during teaching. Moreover, Hong is a very well-behaved student. When facing Che, who is one year younger than herself, she does not show any contempt at all. She completely regards Che as her teacher in illusion arts. This is mostly due to her character and how Che has always been a genius. As the name suggests, the illusion technique is to create an illusion to confuse the opponent. The principle is very simple. Project your own chakra into the enemy's visual senses. Che began to teach the illusion technique step by step. Hong studied very seriously, but Che was not as serious as Hong. While Che was busy teaching, demonstrating the illusion technique, and explaining the techniques and tips, he was secretly observing various activities in the third training ground. At this time, the third training ground was very quiet. There was no one except Che in infrared. In the huge open space, you could almost hear the chirping of insects and birds in the grass and woods. Namikaze Minato should be coming soon. Che had been calculating the time in his mind. Namikaze Minato should have reported the mission to the Hokage by now. If the content of his conversation with Kashina was true, he should be on his way to the third training ground by now. Che was thinking about that mysterious ninjutsu that was not yet fully developed. Sure enough, it didn't take long for Namikaze Minato's handsome figure to appear at the third training ground, but there was another person beside him. The man was obviously much older than Namikaze Minato, with long white braided hair, wearing a brown inner lining and a red outer coat. There was a mole on the left side of his nose, and a red mark under each eye. In short, he looked very good. Recognizable. In terms of chakra, he is even stronger than Namikaze Minato. Is this the legendary Sanin of Konoha? Che felt a little shocked in his heart. Namikaze Minato surpassed Fugaku and Yuhi Makoto in Che's knowledge, and the man in front of him surpassed Namikaze Minato. On this day, Che saw two top powerhouses in a row. Che believed that even if these two people were not the most powerful in the world, they would be close to each other. Che knew that there was a Hokage above the Sanin of Konoha, and there were five cages recognized in the ninja world. The Jiraiya in front of him was probably not much different from the cage in terms of strength. Kurinai noticed that Che was looking at the two people who had just arrived at the third training ground, so she stopped what she was doing and said, that is Lord Jiraiya, one of the three ninjas. Che nodded and continued to guide Hong's practice as if nothing had happened. Namikaze Minato and Jiraiya also noticed Che and Kurinai, but they didn't take these two children seriously. The huge third training ground can fully accommodate two waves of people practicing without disturbing each other. How far has your new technique been developed? Jiraiya asked casually. He was very concerned about the progress of his apprentice and had high hopes for it. Minato rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment and said, There's not much progress, so I invited the teacher here today just to seek a breakthrough. Jiraiya nodded and said, Your new technique has been developed for three years. I really have to come over and help you. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. Jiraiya patted his chest and expressed confidently, while Minato kept looking silly. After a while, the two started to get down to business. Minato became serious, holding the wrist of his right hand with his left hand, and opening his right hand upwards, maintaining a slightly empty grip. Che's attention was attracted again at this time. Thanks to his six eyes, Che could detect every move of Namikaze Minato, including the movements of his hands. Are you practicing? There are no seals. Could it be Muji Ninjutsu? There is such an operation. Namikaze Minato's move shocked Che, because Che had never been exposed to no seals before. Seal Ninjutsu. I saw a ball of chakra condensed out of thin air in Minato's hand, and it began to spin. As it continued to spin, it gradually formed a blue chakra ball. Minato saw the new technique taking shape, and as soon as he smiled happily, the chakra ball in his hand began to shake. 
Minato's face instantly became solemn, and he did not dare to slack off at all. Jiraiya next to him was also watching Minato's situation as if he was facing a formidable enemy. However, the chakra ball swung more and more crookedly, and even began to vibrate at a high frequency. At this moment, Jiraiya yelled danger, and Minato immediately smashed his right hand to the ground. Boom! After the farce, the two sat on a big rock in the training ground to rest. Minato, I want to eat popsicles. Jiraiya said with a wink. Minato nodded and agreed with a gentle smile, and then disappeared in an instant. Che, who noticed that Minato's aura disappeared instantly, turned his head in surprise and looked in the direction of Jiraiya. Only then did he dare to confirm that Namikaze Minato had really disappeared out of thin air, and it was definitely not within a few hundred meters. At this time, Jiraiya also looked towards Che. Che didn't dare to look any further, so he turned his head. Disappearing out of thin air instead of moving at high speed means that the ninjutsu used by Namikaze Minato involves space. It seems the world is more interesting than I imagined. Che thought in his heart. Because Minato disappeared in an instant, Che's six eyes didn't even have time to decipher the mystery. To see through this space ninjutsu, Minato would probably need to complete a demonstration within Che's field of vision. Before the shock in Che's heart completely dissipated, Minato's figure appeared at the training ground again. Minato held a bottle of water and two conjoined popsicles in his hands. He handed the popsicles to Jiraiya and sat down to take a sip of water. Jiraiya took the popsicle, broke it open, and asked, which side do you want to eat? Either way, Minato, who originally thought it didn't matter which side he was on, suddenly realized something. Quote dot dot dot. The words are the same over there. An idea flashed in Minato's heart, and he immediately jumped up and shouted, That's it, Jiraiya Sensei. If the extraction is the same no matter which direction, Minato felt that he had found the secret to the new technique. But Jiraiya said nonchalantly, Huh, what's wrong? Don't you want to eat? Then I'll eat both of them. Minato concentrated on the development of new techniques, leaving Jiraiya alone and returned to the center of the training ground to continue trying. Refine, rotate, and maintain from two directions at the same time. You will definitely succeed this time. Minato raised his right hand and began to condense chakra. I don't know if he was nervous, but it took Minato a long time to condense chakra this time, and slowly signs of chakra appeared in his hands. Two streams of chakra appeared in the palm of the hand at the same time, and they began to rotate in different directions, and the shape of the chakra ball quickly formed. This time is different from any other time. This time the chakra ball remains extremely stable. The two chakras continue to rotate at high speed inside without affecting the external stability at all. For the first time, it's taking shape. The strong wind from the chakra ball blew up Minato's yellow hair, and a bright smile filled his handsome face, let's name it. At this time, Jiraiya finished chewing the popsicle and came over, just in time to hear Minato read the name loudly, Nimbus Popsicle Inspired Spiral Jiraiya Double Shaki Pill. It's smelly and long, don't you have the talent for naming? Jiraiya looked at Minato who thought he had achieved something very clever and was speechless. Minato's voice even reached Che and Kurinai, and they both agreed, what a terrible name. I have to say, this name is very logical, but it's just too bad. Che looked at the blue chakra ball in Minato's hand from a distance, and while activating the six eyes of chakra to analyze the ninjutsu, he sighed, if I had to name it, it would be called Blue Spiral. After a while, Minato put away the Nimbus Popsicle and inspired Jiraiya Shwankamaru, and Che also completed the analysis of this ninjutsu with a smelly and long name. Jiraiya said to Minato at this time, Anyway, the development of new techniques should come to an end now. I have other application matters for tasks, so I will leave for a while. You can take advantage of this gap to have a good rest. Do you understand? Minato seemed to be still immersed in the new technique he had just succeeded in, and answered casually, yes. Jiraiya just left the training ground. Minato was leaning on a stone by the woods and continued to refine his new technique. It seemed unrealistic for him to rest for the time being. On the other side, Che copied such a powerful technique and was in a good mood. He happily continued to teach Yuri Hong how to use the illusion technique. Hong thought Che was making fun of Minato's bad name just now, and thought to herself, I didn't expect Che to have such a childish side. 
Time passed. Che and Kurenai had almost completed today's training progress. Namikaze Minato was also familiar with his new technique, and the three of them were ready to leave the training ground. At this moment, a figure suddenly appeared in the woods, it was Uzumaki Kashina. Speaking of which, Che was the first to discover Kashina hiding in the woods. Minato waited until Kashina poked her head out before looking up in surprise. Eh? Hey, why are you here Kashina, doesn't it matter? Kashina raised her voice a little guilty and explained. Ah. No. San. Sandame Sama gave special permission, said that it is possible to walk out of the barrier. I see, no wonder the usual supervisor is not here either. Minato easily believed Kashina's words. Che, who was about to leave, had a look of ghost on his face, do you believe this? Are the IQs of Konoha Jonan so low? Che's six eyes did not see the Anbu responsible for guarding at all, and the seal in Kashina's body seemed to be loosened a lot. It was obviously Kashina who sneaked out on her own. It's not a good place to stay here for a long time. Che raised his guard in his heart, and at the same time pulled Yuri Hong out. Hong was held by the hand and felt shy for a moment. Compared to this, it was my fault just now. I got angry at you. Kashina bowed sincerely and apologized. Minato was stunned for a moment, then lowered his eyebrows and said, No, it's me who should apologize. I failed to keep my agreement with you. At this time, Che secretly thought that he was unlucky and immediately ran away with Hong. Six eyes caught that the nine tails had leaked most of its power. With his current strength, continuing to stay at the training ground would be courting death. Che saw that Hong hadn't realized the seriousness of the problem and couldn't move forward, so he forcibly picked up Hong in a princess hug, filled his legs with magic power, and ran away at an unprecedented speed. The power of tailed beasts is so terrifying. The chakra leaked by the Kyubi really startled Che, and then he realized why everyone in the village was afraid of the Jinchuriki. Such violent and uncontrollable power can often only be used for destruction. In Kashina's spiritual world, Kayubi struggled to break free from the seal while continuing to confuse Kashina's mind, hurry up and unlock all the seals. This way you can be liberated from this pain. If you don't want to do this, I will possess you and kill you. At this critical moment, Minato rushed to Kashina regardless of his own injuries, condensed chakra with his right hand and slapped Kashina's abdomen, Kashina. Hold on. Minato was using his own chakra to strengthen the four-image seal that sealed Kayubi. Kayubi was secretly frightened within the seal, and even compared Minato's talent to that of the first Hokage. Because sealing techniques are recognized as the most difficult among all techniques, not to mention the high-level sealing technique passed down from generation to generation by the Uzumaki clan such as the Four Symbols Seal. Che realized that Nine Tails' power had been contained, so he slowed down his escape and wanted to observe the scene from the edge. Kayubi asked in the voice of Kashina, why would a ninja like you stick to this little girl? It was obvious that Kayubi had a lot of resentment towards Minato who ruined his good deeds. Minato put an arm around Kashina's shoulders and said, I like strong people. I like people who are stronger than me, so I like Kashina very much and I can't bear to lose her. Minato's touching love words were all heard by Kashina in the spiritual world. Therefore, Kashina recalled the teachings given to her by the First Lady Hokage and the former Kayubi Jinchuriki Uzumaki Mito, Kashina, we may indeed be we are at the center of the whirlpool, but if we climb spontaneously, we will definitely find love. Kashina's eyes instantly became firm, because she had found her love. Kashina rose up to resist Kayubi and used King Kong blockade to try to seal Kayubi again. Kayubi was already furious, but he didn't expect that his actions would unexpectedly bring Minato and Kashina's relationship closer, and he seemed to have become a moon elder. The Nine Tails was angry and condensed a powerful tailed beast jade in the spiritual world, and used the chain to throw Kashina to the ground. At the same time, in the real world, the leaked tailed beast chakra made Kashina a hideous and terrifying bloody chakra coat was attached to his body, with seven tails trailing behind him. The violent Kashina transformed from Naneo stabbed Minato's body with one blow. Kashina in the spiritual world cried and shouted, Minato, please leave it alone. Leave. Get out of here quickly. Minato did not leave, but looked at Kashina firmly and said, I will not, leave. I will never, leave. Regardless of his injury, Minato put one hand on Kashina's abdomen to strengthen the seal, 
and at the same time hugged Kashina's body tightly, thus entering Kashina's spiritual world. I can feel. Kashina always has my presence in her heart. Minato jumped high in Kashina's spiritual world, holding high the ninjutsu developed to protect Kashina. Kashina took the opportunity to strengthen the King Kong blockade and restricted Kayubi's movements. Kayubi had no choice but to use the tailed beast jade that had just been condensed in his mouth to fight head on with Minato's Nimbus popsicle inspired spiral hair Jiraiya twin pills. I will never hand Kashina over to you. Two spheres containing huge amounts of chakra collided violently, with astonishing power. The explosion that erupted instantly caused Minato, who was close to him, to lose consciousness. When Minato regained consciousness, the first thing he saw was the ceiling of the hospital. Kashina looked at Minato who had just woken up at the bedside with concern. Minato sat up in a daze, ah. Kashina hugged her immediately. Minato was reluctant to let go for a long time, which made Minato scream in pain but he also enjoyed it. Jiraiya and Tsunade stood beside the hospital bed with relieved expressions on their faces, looking at the young couple in front of them. After the two were intimate, Minato thanked Jiraiya and Tsunade on the hospital bed, Thank you, Sensei and Tsunade-sama, for saving me. Jiraiya and Tsunade both waved their hands and said there was no need to thank themselves. You were picked up by the two kids at the training ground. If you want to thank them, go and thank them. Jiraiya said with a smile. Tsunade said, I did not cure your injury. I only provided a treatment plan. Shizun was the surgeon. Minato still expressed his gratitude respectfully, and at the same time, he already thought of the two children Jiraiya mentioned in his mind. One is a boy with white hair and blue eyes, and the other is a girl with black hair and red eyes. You must thank them later. Minato reminded himself secretly in his heart. A week later, at Yuhi's home, Che and Hong were preparing to have dinner together when the doorbell rang. Through the cover of the door, Che's six eyes already knew the identity of the visitor, it was Minato Namikaze. Che and Hong came to the door together and opened it. Minato, who was wearing casual sportswear, seemed to have recovered from his injuries. He smiled and said hello. Hello everyone, thanks to you two for sending me to the hospital at the third training ground, thank you all. Konoha 43 years. After class, Che was refining chakra in his seat. The two little girls Hong and Hongdu next to him were chatting about all the interesting things that happened recently. I heard that Kakashi has been promoted to Chunin. Enko came closer, as if she wanted to reveal important information. Yuhi Hong was a little surprised and asked in disbelief, really? Yes, I listened to what my dad said. Mitarai Enko said truthfully, ensuring the reliability of her information. Then Kakashi has become the youngest Chunin in Konoha. Kurinai said and looked at Che who was practicing. So Che never cares about these false reputations, but the people in Konoha have already ranked Kakashi and Che as the two strongest geniuses today. Therefore, Hong is somewhat concerned about Che's thoughts. Although Che was refining chakra, he could still hear the noise outside, so he also knew the news about Kakashi's promotion to Chunin. Che noticed that Kurinai was looking at him, so he opened his eyes, looked at Kurinai and said, Kakashi's promotion to Chunin shows that his strength has made great progress. But this has nothing to do with me, the villagers want me to be tied with him, that's their business. Hong nodded, feeling that Che was really indifferent to fame and fortune. But at this moment, Uchiha Bronze Fire walked into the class, and he brought a piece of news. Brother Che, Kakashi Hitaki just asked me to say something at the school gate. He wants to fight you again. Uchiha Copperfire was so carefree that almost the entire class heard his voice. The originally noisy class suddenly became quiet. Why does Kakashi want to fight Che again? Yes, yes, that Uchiha Bronze Fire is Uchiha Che's younger brother. What they said must be true. The students in the class immediately broke out into an unprecedented heated discussion, speculating whether Che would agree to this battle, and who would be the winner if this battle happened. Tongwo came to Che, waiting for Che's reply. Under the attention of the whole class, Che said two words, okay. Tonghuo immediately gave a thumbs up and said, I knew you wouldn't be afraid, brother. Tongwo immediately went out and continued to act as a microphone. Yuhi Hong asked with concern on her face, can you win? Che replied, we can win. Che's tone was very calm, as if he was stating some established fact. 
Hong felt like he had taken a reassurance, and his whole heart was relieved. Nohara Lin silently put her hands on her chest and prayed, Kakashi, you will definitely win. Although Lin said this, she felt very unsure in her heart. After Kakashi graduated, his interactions with Lin became less frequent, so Lin didn't know Kakashi's current strength. Even though Kakashi was promoted to Chunin, Nohara Rin had no idea about the term Chunin, so she couldn't imagine Kakashi's current strength. But she could see Che's strength with her own eyes. After Kakashi left, Che was the undisputed number one in the entire grade in the school, and he was leading by a cliff. Therefore, in Nohara Lin's view, the outcome of the battle between Kakashi and Che is unpredictable. Seeing that Lin was thinking about Kakashi so much, Obito curled his lips angrily and said, Huh, if you lose, you lose. Anyway, Kakashi has already lost once. But even though Obito said this, he didn't necessarily think so in his heart. Obito still didn't want Kakashi to lose again. Obito's logic is this. If Kakashi loses to Che twice, wouldn't it prove that Kakashi's strength is really not worthy of the name? And Obito has always regarded Kakashi as the target of his pursuit. Doesn't that mean that his efforts are meaningless? In fact, it wasn't just Obito who thought so, Metkai also had similar thoughts. Metkai has always believed that Kakashi is the one he wants to surpass, so he often drags Kakashi to fight with him. Metkai's current record is 0 wins, 16 losses and 0 draws, which can be described as disastrous. But Metkai was never discouraged, because he knew that Kakashi was a genius in the entire ninja world. So now I subconsciously don't want Kakashi to lose. The place where Che and Kakashi will fight is in the school. After school, Che came to the agreed place, which was the same school training ground as before. Hong followed Che, and behind them were a large group of onlookers eating melons. Speaking of which, everyone seems to be used to Che and Hong Chu having together. A group of people arrived near the school training ground, and Kakashi was already waiting in the training ground. Kakashi was seen wearing a black short-sleeved outfit. His neck and lower half of his face were still hidden under the black mask, but he could not hide his lean and handsome appearance. The glowing iron arm armor on his arms and the Konoha forehead protector on his forehead demonstrate Kakashi's strength as a ninja and his dangerous aura that should be kept away from strangers. I have to say that Kakashi has become more handsome this year. Kakashi's arrival made many little girls in the ninja school cheer. Lin looked at Kakashi tenderly with longing. When Obito saw this scene, he immediately felt that all his worries about Kakashi were in vain, Kakashi, you'd better lose. Chase said hello to Hong next to him and walked into the training ground alone. Hong could only look at Chase back and silently pray for Che. I didn't expect you to agree so readily. It just so happens that I don't have a mission today, Kakashi said. Indeed, as a Chunin, Kakashi's daily time must be less free than Che's. Therefore, Che agreed to fight that day, which was naturally a good thing for Kakashi. Che smiled slightly and said, of course, but there is one thing you need to figure out. Kakashi raised his eyes and looked at Che. A tuft of white hair was pressed between his eyes by his forehead protector, swaying slightly in the wind. Che held out a finger and said, you are the challenger. This sentence blew into the ears of everyone present. Uchiha Copperfire and others immediately cheered Che excitedly, brother is so handsome. Hong only felt that Che, who confidently said these words to Kakashi in front of her, was simply too charming. She was so distracted by Che that she couldn't even hear Anko calling her. Lin was still watching Kakashi, cheering for Kakashi unmoved. Obito and Metkai only felt weird. After all, if Kakashi was the challenger, then they were the challenger's challenger. Just as everyone was talking about Che's words, Kakashi spoke again. Indeed, I am the challenger. Kakashi accepted the title of challenger calmly, which made Che couldn't help but think more highly of Kakashi. It seems like you've made a lot of progress this year. Che raised his eyebrows in surprise. The corners of Kakashi's mouth under the mask were slightly raised and he said, you will know later whether there has been any progress. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.